You see, there comes the smoke. And they are just about set to come out of the North Tunnel and get this crowd going. There's the signal, and here they come, the Miami Hurricanes. So the Hurricanes try to start building on a new win streak as the Clemson Tigers come calling. Kickoff just around the corner. ESPN's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Pioneer Pure Vision Plasma Displays. The purest color, the purest experience. And Wendy's Home Style Chicken Strips. It's better here. Welcome to ESPN's College Football. Tonight, the Clemson Tigers take on the 10th rank Miami Hurricanes. All season, ESPN Saturday Night College Football will be broadcast in high definition, presented by Phillips and Best Buy. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, along with Mike Gottfried, and welcome to a very wet and soggy Orange Bowl Stadium. It's been raining in Miami for over two hours. It has dropped off just a little bit, but it's going to be a wet night all the way around. Speaking of raining on parades, Mike, I look at the last three games. Miami has given up almost 1,500 yards, a total of 100 points. That is anything but Miami-esque when it comes to defensive football. Ron, they're young on defense, and they're playing with some key entries. But Miami, the last four games, haven't tackled very well, given up big plays. They've been run against. Uh, they're not making plays. They need some leadership from Mantrell, Roll, the corners, somebody to step up and stop this. Folks, in this ball game tonight, we'll see two of the absolute best return men in all of college football. Ron, Justin Miller is an excellent return guy. FSU, he returned two kickoffs and a punt. And uh, Devin Hester, every time he touches the ball, if I was coaching in this football game, neither of these guys would touch the football and kicks. Tommy Bowden, the head coach of the Clemson Tigers, his sixth season as the head man there on a three-game win streak. Second year in a row that Tommy, coming down the stretch, has put the heat on, and the kids have played better. Larry Coker in his fourth season at Miami. Unbelievable numbers. Last week's loss at Carolina, only his fourth in his career. 91% winning percentage. Here is the series history, and here's how they stand. In fact, interesting here, Miami leads it 4-1, but look at the last time that Clemson won a ball game over the Hurricanes. 1951, and it happened in the Orange Bowl game, and obviously none of these youngsters even were in somebody's thoughts to see that ball game. Let's go to the sideline. Aaron Andrews, the third person on our crew. Aaron. Well, Ron, every Thursday, the Miami Hurricanes, they hold a closed-door players-only meeting. There was some talk heading into that gathering that a lot of the players were upset at the defense, saying that they didn't prepare properly for the UNC game. But on Thursday night, quarterback Brock Berlin stood up and said there will be no pointing of the fingers this year. We're not doing that. It's all of us together. The theme for tonight's game, it's all about pride. I'm told the players said they didn't have it versus UNC, but they better find it tonight. Ron? Okay, Aaron, we will look forward to your reports tonight. There's a look at Devin Hester. And as Mike Godfrey said, you know, the, the only wise thing to do, even if you have to have a bad kick and kick it out of bounds, do that, but don't give the ball to him. I talked to Tommy Bob this week. I don't believe that he will kick to Devin Hester. Maybe squib the ball or pooch it. Tommy's quote was, and you see a, a squib kick right there. Touchdown is going to be recovered at the 31-yard line. Tommy said if he returns one on us, it is because we made a mistake. And you hear the boos from the crowd, but I'm sorry. I don't think he's going to see the football tonight as far as kicking. Brock Berlin, the starting quarterback for the Miami Hurricanes out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Mike, he's turned into quite a leader and has had a much better second half of the season. Ron, he's been a most valuable player type quarterback. The big throws, the big plays, Brock Berlin is in him. Well, number four, Devin Hester is in the ballgame, and they have a package for him. 
He won't run very many plays on offense, but they will get him in the ball game and try to get him the football. Pass deep over the middle, got it open, and that is complete across midfield and it's going to move the chains as Frank Gore came out of the backfield. Defense was looking at uh, Devin Hester and Mike they got it away to Gore. That's the one thing you find when Devin Hester is in the ball game that you're going to try to really concentrate on him. That's why Gore got behind the linebacker. Hester still in the ball game, but this time they line him up at wide receiver. Pitch back goes to Hester. I beg your pardon. Tries to turn the corner, and he's going to be just short of the 41-yard line. The remainder of the starters on offense: Frank Gore and Humphrey, Everett the tight end, Roscoe Paris and Lance Leggett, the outstanding freshman out of Arlington, Texas, at the wide receivers. Joel uh, Joel Rodriguez there in the middle. He uh, is the bell cow, I would say. Derek Morse is a new face, hasn't played that much. And Chris Myers, who grades out uh, more consistently than anyone else on the line, is uh, the starter at right tackle. Second down and six, play action. Berlin gets the pass off quickly, got it to his tight end, Everett. And Everett is going to be knocked out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. And let's check the defensive starters for Clemson. Bennett and Fountain, two of the leaders on the defense at defensive end. Coleman and Tate are the tackles. The linebackers, it all starts with the man in the middle there, Leroy Hill out of Haddock, Georgia, number 43. And then the secondary for Clemson, this is the way they'll start. Ty Hill, decent on cover. Justin Miller on the other side, along with Fudge and Pugh. Fudge going for a record. Three interceptions in three straight games for him. From the 24. Straight ahead with the running play, and it's Frank Gore this time. He's not going to go for very much yardage as Clemson jumps up defensively. Charles Bennett, one of the first men to get there to him. Ron, it's important that Miami's playing at home. Huh? The crowd's with them. They're coming off that upset. The national title hopes look dim. So you'd expect them to be a little flat, but they're at home in this crowd. It's a good thing they are playing here. Mike, there's another combination that they like. Hill comes into the lineup. Quadring Hill, number 23. He's a fullback, but he also is a tailback. And they can get mismatches as far as cover with him. But this time they use him as a blocker. Gets his block at the 10. At the 5, Gore will walk in. And a very quick opening series touchdown for the Miami Hurricane. 23 yards in the scoring play. Well, if that is any indication of how the Hurricanes are going to play tonight, I hope that the Clemson Tigers brought their A game because they made that look extremely easy. The extra point is perfect. We'll take a timeout. And very quickly, the Miami Hurricanes, on this run by Gore of 23 yards, jump on top 7-0. Miami 7 to nothing. Leggett, the freshman out of Texas with the key block, Mike. Leggett and gets man coverage is going to crack back here. And then all of a sudden, Ty Hill gets caught inside. And uh, Hill, the fullback, hits an easy block on him. Frank Gore in the end zone. A good call versus that defense. And you got man coverage and you're running with the crack back. Ty Hill couldn't get outside leverage. Justin Miller, now we get a chance to see him. An average of almost 34 yards per return. He's got three returns for a touchdown. Two on kickoff returns, one on punt return. Brian Monroe, the left footer, comes forward and sends this one high, but not deep, and it's going to be returnable. Here's Miller from the three. Breaks by one man and in very good coverage at the 20-yard line. And that means that Charlie Whitehurst will come on to run the offense for the Clemson Tigers. Mike, he's had a good year, but not a great year. 60% last year, only 50% this year. A lot of that, I think, has to do with new faces on the offensive line because of injury. You're right. New receivers, new offensive line. He thinks he has to carry the football team. Seven touchdown passes, 13 interceptions. One setback, and that's Reggie Merriweather. 
number 37, who has an average of just over five yards per try. He scored four touchdowns, but he'll get the handoff. Tries the left side of the line, nothing. He was stoned, maybe a loss of one. It was Tavares Gooden is there to make the tackle. Here's the remainder of the offense. Merriweather, Steven Jackson, the fullback. Ben Hall, the tight end. Bayham, one of the wide receivers, along with Aries Curry. And up front with the offensive line, Barry Richardson could have gone to high school for another year, wanted to come on out, and is playing. He's a starter at the left tackle. Tommy Sharp, one of the leaders, the offensive center, number 53. Second down, about ten and a half. Whitehurst looking, looking, and tries to throw it away. And a grounding flag has been thrown as Orion Harris comes in to make the sack on him. Now, let me ask you something. What's, I guess he was not sacked before he got the pass away then. So, Orion Harris with a good charge in the defensive line. Charlie Whitehurst should have taken the sack. Ron Cherry with the accurate call and Mike let me tell you something Orion Harris only had one half sack for the entire season and he's one of the guys the defensive coordinator Randy Shannon has kind of called out to say hey you got to play hard they've called them all out this <laughs> this week you're going to see effort out of this defense third down and 17 following the penalty Clemson's got to take it all the way out to the 30-yard line. And you see the Hurricanes creeping up very, very close, and then they back off. The safeties now drop deep. And they'll go with the running play. Merriweather, 15 at the 20, and he'll take it to the 22, tackled by Thomas Carroll. Good call because you got third and long yardage. You don't want to turn the ball over and, and get in a route right here. Tommy Bowden knows he's got an enthusiastic up team in Miami. He's just got to stay with them right now, take their best punch, and then play. So here we go now with the punt game. Chasen. And we got Hester back deep. Now, one of the things I was told just prior to the ball game, don't be surprised if Cole Chasen does soccer-style kicking. In other words, take the snap, move to his right, and then get the kick away. He did not on that one, and it's a driving spiral returnable from the 31. <laughs> Hester stepped out of bounds, I believe they're going to say, just before he reached the 35-yard line. Aaron Andrews down on the sideline. What do you got for us? Well, Ron, the last time Clemson was here in the Orange Bowl, January 1st, 1982, they won the national championship. They beat Nebraska. Now, head coach Tommy Bowden says he's not going to use that to, for his team to pump them up for this game. He said some of them weren't even born back then. But what he did tell his team is how far that Clemson team went. They were undefeated that year. They beat Nebraska. They proved a lot of people wrong that year. And he says that's what he's telling his team heading into the Orange Bowl tonight. Ron? Okay, well, they got their hands full. Uh, it's, as the old saying goes, uh, they get more than they can say grace over right now with the attitude of this Miami Hurricane team. They came out firing on all cylinders. Rock Berlin, who operates best from the shotgun, will take the snap at the 29, going to go vertical, going to go on top, and the ball is knocked away on a nice defensive play by number eight, that's Ty Hill, who was one of the sprinters on the champion ACC sprint team from the Clemson Tigers. The main coverage on the outside, Ty Hill runs right with the wide receiver, Moss. Pretty good coverage, it was. almost got a pickoff. It was uh, very good coverage. And the interesting thing about uh, Ty Hill, boy, you could see the second gear that he put it into, and it just moved right on up there with Sonoris Moss. He was not going to be outrun by any means. Second down and 10 from the 34. Running play. They give it to Gore. Breaks through the tackle. Has five. Has 10 counted off at 11 yards on the run. Tremaine Billy, who was an undersized middle linebacker, playing because of an injury, made the stop. Game plans for Miami and offense score. Moss and Hester, 35-plus touches. Run the football. Big plays from Brock Berlin. He's already delivered. Defense set the tone with a big play early. They did that. Cover the crossing route. The crossing routes have been a problem for Miami's secondary. So they operate with a first and 10, Mike. They have it at their own 44-yard line. Quadrant Hill comes in at fullback. 
number 23. And they'll fake it to Gore. Sets deep in the pocket. Look at the protection. Gets the ball off. Has it complete. That's Moss. And they'll tackle him after only a short gain. Quick coverage by Tremaine Billy. That uh, linebacker, you could see him getting there in a hurry. You're right. Uh, the protection. You don't get anybody close to Brock Berlin. Too long to cover the crossing route of Moss. You know, these, these corners for Clemson, Mike, can really run. They're good. But your point is well taken. You can't give anybody that kind of time because you can't cover forever. A lot of field. Berlin now 3 of 4 for 46 yards. For the 49-yard line, second down, pitch goes to Gore. Open side of the field. They hit him up for a moment. He got away from the first pack and is going to almost have the first down at the 47-yard line. That is an outstanding second effort by Frank Gore, the junior, out of Coral Gables, Florida. Trey Tate defensively. This is a defense for Clemson that Tommy Bowden said this week is really playing better and they're kind of leading this football team. Now, they've been stunned here early, but you're right. Justin Miller, Ty Hill, very good corners. Leroy Hill, very good linebacker, good front four. Mike Tyrone Moss is coming to the ball game. We saw Frank Gore coming to the sideline. Because of the two knee injuries and surgeries that he's had, they try to use him at times when they think he is with full steam. And you see what Tyrone Moss can do as he wiggles his way at right guard and then takes it to the left, down to the 40-yard line. Ty Hill stopped him, but he has the first down. And just like that, after a quick breather, Gore comes back into the lineup. Larry Coker said he wanted to run the football tonight against Clemson. And he's setting that example early in this football game. Rashad Butler, the left tackle, a junior out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, also with a paving block on the play. Gore now four carries, 37 yards, and the touchdown. Back into the lineup. Blitz is on, quick out pass, got it out in the flat, and that's complete to Buck Ortega. And Ortega, they will say, is pushed out of bounds just inside the 35. Ty Hill has been a busy guy so far. Yeah, good play calling by Larry Coker, Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator, because everything they're calling right now, they're really got Clemson's defense back on their heels. Six rushes, five pass plays. They got a good combination. You know, Larry is is such a good guy, very upfront, and he just said, "Hey, we got to quit talking about it and just go do it. We got to go do it." Door back into the boundary, nothing doing, and a good pursuit from the backside as the tackle is made, and it's 99. Maurice found along with Trey Tate combining on the stop, and a change defensively for the Clemson Tigers as they will get the extra defensive backs into the ball game. Trey Tate, you can see him. The coaches say one of the most improved of that defensive front. Third down, Miami needs the 30-yard line. Eighth play of the drive. They lead it 7-0. Brock Berlin in the shotgun. Retreats. Good protection again out in the flat gets it complete and that's not going to go for nearly enough yardage as Parrish came up to make the hit but Miller was right there great closing speed again by these defensive backs of Clemson and one of the things that uh, Dan Werner talked about the offensive coordinator he said these defensive backs can run every one of them well they're they're covered really well Justin Miller's a very good defensive corner Miami going to go for this Clemson's got to watch for the Signals that they don't jump offside here. Joel Rodriguez comes out of the football. Number 70, the junior out of right here in Miami. It's fourth down. And you see where the yellow line is, squarely on the 30-yard line. That's Roscoe Parrish in motion. And they throw it to Parrish. He gets a block on the outside, turns the corner, first down. And you can add about eight more yards on it. Ty Hill forced him out of bounds. But the beauty of that play right there is utilizing the college rule. The ball is thrown behind the line so you can block downfield. Yeah, Sonoris Moss, number 83, is going to have a real nice block on the outside right here. And that allows Roscoe Parrish to pick up the first down. Another very good play call. So the Hurricanes took the opening drive and marched it right down the field, and they are doing the same thing again as they have it at the 22-yard line. Ortega and Everett, two tight ends set for the Miami Hurricanes. Play action again. Under pressure, 
And he's just going to throw this one away. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. What do you got for us, buddy? Well, Ron, Oklahoma State hasn't won in Austin since 1944. And Miller takes us down deep in the heart of Texas. We have Vernon Morenci of the Pope going in against the Longhorns. And Oklahoma State on top, 21-7. Inside, nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Okay, Reese, I'll tell you, that is... Uh... It, in a way, is not surprising. Oklahoma State, a very physical football team. People wondered if they left their emotions on that field back in Stillwater against OU last week. I think they've answered already. The 11th play of the drive here that started back at the 34-yard line. Berlin sets to throw all the time in the world, and this was thrown way too long. Sonoris Moss was the intended receiver. But he was well covered, and the ball thrown too far. Good pressure by Maurice Fountain. Number 99, not allowing Brock Berlin to stand up there and find the open receiver. Brock Berlin is playing lights out. We saw it against North Carolina State. He scored a lot of points against North Carolina. He's starting this football game with some big throws. Well, did you know, and as uh, Coach Coker said yesterday, offense has not really been the problem. The Achilles Hill has been the defense. Third down and 10. We need to take it to the 12-yard line. And that pass middle screen is caught. And immediately the tackle is made. Darnell Jenkins, first time that we've seen him tonight. And he is a big play kid as they tried to get him loose on that uh, middle screen. And it'll be field goal trying time as John Petty comes on for the Hurricanes. John Penny out of Clearwater, Florida. First team all Big East last year. 35-yard attempt squarely in the middle of the field. Good pass, good hold, and a kick right down the middle. We'll take a timeout as the Hurricanes so far on offense have made it look easy. 6.07 left in this first quarter. 10 to nothing, Miami. ESPN's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Bacardi Silver Limon Premium Malt Beverage. Flavor your night. And Saturn, people first. And we are back as you look at that uh, Clemson defense. And Mike, I, I, they're not really at fault. <laughs> I mean, they're going against a team that's dialing all the right numbers right now. Running the ball well, Brock Berlin's throwing it well, and their offense has had one series, didn't stay on the field. They need a series out of their offense. Well, look at that. 13 plays, 49 yards, 5.03 uh, off the clock. 13 plays, the longest of the season. And then Petty hits the 35 yard field goal. Monroe to kick it off, Miller the deep man. And very returnable. This one from the 10 yard line. And this is Curry. Curry, 20, 25, and maybe to the 26 yard line. Mike, how about game plan for the Clemson Tigers? Well, don't beat yourself with turnovers. They haven't yet. Test Miami's run defense. Everybody in the last four weeks has run the football. Don't give it up. Don't kick to Hester. They haven't done that. Keep fades and deep throws of Brock Berlin to a minimum. So the Tigers with their second offensive possession. Clemson with a three-game winning streak trying to keep it going. And they've dug themselves a little bit of a hold here on the road. Look at total yardage. Three for Clemson. 117 for the Hurricanes in the early going. Whitehurst deep in the pocket gets that one out complete and that is Bayham and he will have it very close to the first down as we check back with Reese Davis. Reese. And Ron Taco Bell takes us to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Stanford and Arizona State. Andrew Walter going up top for Terry Richardson. This one is significant because it's Walter's 77th career touchdown pass that ties John Elway's Pac-10 record. But still John Elway's alma mater up by four on the Sun Devils. Well, that's some, some fancy company there. Congratulations to him. That is Curry in motion. They go with a running play to Merriweather. And Merriweather is maybe going to have one yard, and that's it. Orion Harris is uh, there to make the tackle. 
Mike, one of the things as we take a look at the uh, Miami defense, what they have allowed, first four games, 26 points, 863. Look, look at the last three games. The last three games, people have run, teams have run on them. They've thrown the deep ball, the crossing routes, and Miami has not, has given up a lot of big plays. Well, I'll tell you what they have done. Uh, it's seven changes Randy Shannon has made in the defensive starters tonight. Seven that they have moved around. So they're trying to get a lot of people's attention. Straight ahead, Merriweather has five and counted off at about eight yards. He finally is stopped at the 44-yard line by Entrell Roll. When you talk about the changes in the lineup defensively, this week also they hit. They were in the full pads a couple of days this week, and they actually hit scrimmage and uh, had contact. So this football team knows their challenge tonight by the coaching staff. So it's third down, and they need to take it to the 47. Whitehurst got a man open. Did he catch it? Good yes, catch. sir. What a great effort. Playing it out for the ball, Aries Curry, the senior out of Columbia, South Carolina, and it's good for 22 yards, and for the first time tonight, the Clemson Tigers are across midfield. Aries Curry ran a corner route. He's got track speed. He's either considering the NFL or the Olympics. 100 meter NCAA East Regional Champion has great speed. Randy Shannon talked about people letting receivers go, and Mike, that seemed like a, a blown coverage right there. Uh, man it? to man, and uh, the corner route, Curry's just got too much speed for him. They keep it on the ground straight ahead, about three yards, Merriweather, and stopped by the middle of that front. 57 at Javon Naughton, one of the first men to get there. Javon is another guy that got called out this week as his defensive coordinator said, hey, this time last year you had eight sacks. This year you have none. What do you want to say about it? <laughs> well, I can't you say, anything, can't say anything. So, I mean, he's going to say it tonight. He's going to say, I'm going to speak tonight. They, uh, they have tried to push every button they know. Make that ball to Curry. And they want to throw back to him, and he got held up. And Whitehurst he does his smart thing. He just threw it away. But as they tried to sneak him through after they faked the handoff, Mike, wouldn't the defender wouldn't let him through. I think Tommy Bowden's arguing that he got held. Well, I think as he did. Curry came through the uh, line of scrimmage. He got held and tackled. And the official saying, "Hey, I didn't see it." Argue with the back judge. Yeah, talk with the back judge. And that's the worst thing you can tell a coach. Dwayne Coleman checks into the lineup at tailback, replacing Merriweather. It is a third down and seven. The line to make is the Miami 24-yard line. Haynes lead it 10 to nothing. Tigers trying to build a threat. Whitehurst, great protection, throws the ball just a little too high, and he had him open. Kelvin Grant was the intended receiver. Let's see on the last play, Aries Curry. Number one's going to come through and see what happens to him. He gets held right yeah, there. He sure Number does. 98. That's uh, Atkins. Atkins. Baraka Atkins, who they have moved inside to tackle this week. He has been playing defensive end. Jad Dean with the 48-yard field goal attempt. Gets a good pass. Far hash mark. Plenty of distance on this one. And he's good. From 48 yards, Dean. That was big. They needed to answer the scores for a 10 to nothing lead. Now they got a little confidence. Now they took the big best shot of Miami there in this football game. So let's take a timeout. 252 left. Opening quarter. Kings 10 to 3. So we are back. A, a partial answer by the Clemson Tigers as they get the field goal. And that, by the way, is a new record for him. 48 yards, his longest was 47. As you look at Devin Hester, one of the two deep men, he also is joined back there by Jenkins. Here's a look at uh, Jad Dean. He will not, not touch the ball. Hester. Well, they, they pooched it. They kept it on the ground last time. Let's see if he does the same thing again. Yep, that's what he does. Soccer style kick 
on the ground, picked up at the 20-yard line. 30, near sideline. Nobody didn't get contained as a flag comes from way downfield. But I'll tell you, that thing was going to be all the way out to the 48-yard line, Darnell Jenkins. But they're going to bring it back because what appears to be either a hold or a block in the back. Well, you get to kick off team over in the sidelines, and you tell them, say, hey, Hester's not the only guy that can take it back, but you're still all right. Don't get the football to number Holding four. On the return team, number 50, 10 yards from the spot of the file, first down. So that erases uh, an advancement. It cost them about what, Mike? 28 yards here. Looks like they're going to be scrimmaging around the 24. Maybe not quite 28, but 24 yards. And uh, the Hurricanes have it. Actually, this is their worst start of the night. And they'll go with the two back set in the I formation. Tatum Humphrey, the fullback, and Frank Gore, the tailback. Gore, blocker in front. Humphrey tries to clear the way, but a nice job of containment of the crowd. Wanted a flag on a late hit out of bounds. They're not going to get one. And Reese Davis, no flags on you. What you got going there? I've got a cowboy size can of whooping being applied to Texas backside. Texas and Oklahoma State, Vince Young off the deflection, picked off by Padgett McGee. That would set up the Pokes, Donovan Woods, the freshman quarterback, going in for the touchdown. It's 28-7, and the Pokes are threatening to make it worse. Wow, looks like Texas forgot they're at home. <laughs> they forgot they're in uniform. Well, two interceptions by Young, I believe, I read last week, and now one already tonight. On top, Berlin. Wow, what a catch, Roscoe Parrish. I'll tell you, he's not a very big guy at 5'9", 171, but he went up very tall and pulled out a 23-yard reception. Jamal Fudge was right there to whack him down, but Roscoe with the catch. Take another look at it. Good protection. Brock Berlin steps up in the pocket, finds Roscoe Parrish, a guy, the receiver that he said has stepped up, and he feels very comfortable throwing the football to Roscoe Parrish. Parrish now three catches for 34 yards. Play action. Going to go to the other side. Going on top. Got a man out there, and it is knocked away. Defensively, Ty Hill, and how many plays has Ty had tonight? You get man coverage on the outside against Miami. They're going to try it. Darnell Jenkins. Hill did a nice job on the stop and go move and gets his right hand up there and deflects the football. Well, when you consider that uh, he in the indoor was the 60 meter champion and the outdoor was the 100 meter champion in the ACC, those kind of credentials let you know that you're not going to run past him real quickly. He did a good job reading the route. Second down for the 49. They fake the reverse, and this play, the ball is loose. Gore, I'm not sure he ever got a hand on the ball, and it's been recovered by the Clemson Tigers. Travis Pugh, number 29, recovers the football. Leroy Hill with a good hit on Gore. Looks like Charles, Charles Bennett, Bennett stripped the football also. Yeah, Charles Bennett, number 86, is the man who knocked it away. And you know, I was told today by one of the coaches that of all the kids that really benefited from last year's bowl game, the extra workout time really helped him. And it's almost like the light came on in that Peach Bowl game last year. Dwayne Coleman continues to operate at tailback. Whitehurst going to go on top and throws underneath, and the ball is caught at the 30-yard line, and spinning around and going down is Bayham. Mike, let me ask you a question, as we're going to get a replay of this one right here. Whitehurst seems to be a tad high with his passes every time I see him this year. In years past, since he has been there, 6'5 and 6'4 were his receivers. His receivers are not that tall anymore. You think it's just a thing of being able to get that, that aim down a little bit? Yeah, I, I think under the pressure he's under on Miami's defense, just to get it to Bayham was good. But he's got some young receivers that catch the ball well. You're right about the receivers last year. They were outstanding. Now Whitehurst going to run it. 
and slides down after a gain of only two. He thought it was open and then it closed quickly as defensively Tavares Gooden was right there number 52 and no sense and get him uh, him racked up. You see the turnovers for us first seven games six and the last game against uh, NC State six. You talked about Charles Bennett. We had that Peach Bowl game last year. He made his first sack against Casey Clawson in yeah. the first half of that game. Really came alive. Whitehurst rolls the pocket this time, still rolling, and is just going to throw it away. <laughs> the mascot, Sebastian. Yeah. Nice catch. Could have caught it in his beak. When you roll out like Charlie Whitehurst did on this play, the longer you run to the sideline, yeah. the more your receivers get covered. So Sebastian uh, with a little pity not airs on the sideline. Third down. They need the 20 yard line of Miami. Whitehurst looks to the bench for the call. Now he'll come to the offensive line and get him set. There's Curry, the inside receiver. Whitehurst hit and he's going to be sacked second time tonight that they've gotten to him. Baraka Atkins this time. Barack Atkins was a defensive end two weeks ago when we had him against North Carolina State. They moved him inside to give a little bit more pass rush. And he comes through and makes a sack on Charlie Whitehurst. I'll tell you what, he beat Chip Myrick. And Myrick is uh, the young man who was a starter all of last year, has had mono, and they're just getting him back. And I was told he was going to play some tonight, but he was not up to it on that play right there. And Baraka just went right by him. Here's the kick driving spiral and it appears this is going to go yep into the end zone and they will scrimmage at the 20 yard line and with that the end of the opening quarter and as we take a break Miami 10 and the Clemson Tigers 3 36 yards on that kick. So we are back 10 to 3 at the end of the first 15 minutes of play. And the thank goodness the rain has stopped. It rained very heavy this afternoon. Like the field in great condition. I really haven't seen anybody slip, have you? Nobody slipped. Clemson is first wave of Miami's punch and good, survived. Good way so to far. Put it. And that, that first wave, as far as what Coach Godford is talking about, if you're just now joining us, the opening drive just went bam, 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 and they were in the end zone. And they took it down the field, but uh, Clemson stiffened and they forced him to kick a field goal on the second attempt. Hester in the ball game. They get him the football, tries to reverse it, cuts back to the outside. It's Berlin with the block and a nice job defensively. I'll tell you, they strung it out all over the field. Lionel Richardson finally forced him down. Ron, you're right. Lionel Richardson doesn't make this play. Hester might be still running. Number 46, Lionel Richardson's going to sit back here on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Now he's taking on blocks. Look at Berlin. <laughs> Stays out there, makes the play on Hester. Well, the quarterback trying to help out his running back, but I have a feeling that the offensive folks might tell him, go a little easier. We need you throwing passes and handing the football off. Second down and two after all of that. Hester in motion, they fake the pass to him, and then go out on top. They decoyed him, and the freshman was open just over Lance Leggett's hands. And you see Berlin, he realizes he had the opportunity, and he overthrew him. Everybody plays Hester, and when you send him in motion, all of a sudden now he's going to come in motion. You think it's the bubble screen. These guys are Leggett's taking off and running deep routes. And all of a sudden, you freeze on Hester. And then Leggett runs right by you. They just don't get him the football. Wide open. Brock Berlin knows he missed it. Yep, he really did. He'd like to have that one back. I'll tell you something. We are seeing some kind of speed on the outside tonight between the defensive backs of Clemson and the wide receivers of Miami. Moss hit behind the wow. line of scrimmage. Penetration for the Tigers. Leroy Hill, Ron. I'm telling you what. Now, he roared off the football field as a linebacker. You talk about a big time play now. 
Well, he is the second leading tackler on this team. And as I have been told, he's a very quiet guy. He said, other people, oh, they jive talk a little and they and they, they get on their teammates. He said, Leroy never says a word except with his, his shoulder pads and his headgear. Well, he's a leading tackler on this football team. He just roared up and took off all the blockers. Here's Monroe with the kick, the left footer, driving spiral. And a fair catch has been signaled for and made by Justin Miller. So we'll take a timeout. Score remains 10-3 Miami. Well, tonight's game track brought to you by Pioneer. First touchdown of the night, Gore. Look at Quadrant Hill in front with the block. 23 yards, and he walks it in. And then Dean with his personal best 48-yard field goal to get the Tigers on the scoreboard. And as far as Brock Berlin is concerned, he is off to a very good start. Roscoe Parrish going high to grab in that catch right there. Back to live action, Whitehurst on top. Three of six, 50 yards, and add on to that one. Number one, Aries Curry is out there to beat the defensive back. And that was Greg Freak, the strong safety, and he beat him for 39 yards in the play. He bet, beat Devin Hester, too, who's pointing to uh, three to say, go over to the top and cover me. He ran right by Devin Hester. Aries Curry with a good route. Good throw by Whitehurst. See the numbers on Curry, 712 yards, 49 receptions. And a stacked eye right here. Plenty of time on the game clock. Clemson trying to get it in the end zone, leaving this thing up. Draw play, and that's Coleman, and he is going to be knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. Did you lose your head on that play? Keep my head here on at all times, Ron. Stanford and Arizona State. Cardinal had to leave the entire first half. Andrew Walter is going to try to get one more before the break. And he does. Matt Miller. Hey, that's a pretty good way to set a new Pac-10 record for touchdown passes in his career. Number 78, Walter passing John Elway. 17-14 Sun Devils at the break. All righty, our situation 10-3, Miami on top. And now... The Clemson Tigers trying to come up with an answer for the 28-yard line. That movement left tackle. Barry Richardson, then. Barry, as I said, could have gone. Cross to the snap. Full start. 79 offense. That's a five-yard penalty. We're playing the down. Mike, he could, have, he could have gone for another year of high school, and it, he wanted to come on to college and play football, and he's a biology major. So... <laughs> It's asked, not like he came in looking for crip courses. No, I asked Michael O'Kane, did you know when you had Barry Richardson at the when you signed him, did you did you expect him to start? He said no. He just come out of nowhere. Well, it's hard for him to come out of totally nowhere. He's six seven three fifty as a freshman. Nice box. Yeah. They set the screen back into the short side of the field. Coleman, and it's like he ran right back into the defenders. Whoa. When you screen Miami, Miami runs so well they can recover well, on Gooden, the screen. Gooden and McCray were the two that reacted the quickest. And now for the Clemson Tigers, it's going to be third down. And with the loss of that play, they still they got to take it down to the 18-yard line. Yusef Kelly, number five, comes in at tailback. Strong running back, Yusef Kelly. More of a McClendon type back. Pass thrown near sideline, off the mark. Bayham, the intended receiver, down around the 15-yard line, but uh, Whitehurst off the mark on that one. They're talking to Barry Richards and the officials. Did they send in the, the wrong special teams? Because Tommy yeah, Bowden just, uh, he just reacted, though, as if to say no. And now it looks as though they're going to go after a 53-yard field goal. Also could punt it. Yep. Oh, ball is down, kicks on the way, and if he's got the distance, it's good. And he's wide to the right and no good. The youngster had the distance from the 50-plus, but was just off the mark to the right. 
So let's take a timeout. 12 minutes left until halftime. Still the Hurricanes with a seven-point margin. ESPN's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Sprint. With Sprint, business is beautiful. And the 2005 Ford Mustang. Built for the road ahead. Have a good look right there at the causeway and back into uh, Biscayne Bay. It rained off and on the last couple of days here, but it did not seem to dampen the spirit of either team. And uh, as we said, the Miami workouts have been uh, rather stringent this week because of an upset loss on the road last week at Chapel Hill. Tyrone Moss back in the ball game at tailback. And they'll give it to him. Left side turns it up. And he's going to have about three, maybe four yards on the play. Tonight at 9.45 at ESPN2, the Colorado State Rams look to upset Alex Smith and the undefeated Utah Utes. 19 days of primetime football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC continues with day 10 later tonight. Alex Smith, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, Utah on fire. Got to go to Wyoming next week. Laramie, Wyoming. Not an easy spot, is it? Yep. <laughs> Slow sideways there. Second down and seven for the Miami Hurricanes. Berlin with an audible. And again, he'll give it to Moss. Good defense against the run. Charles Bennett is the first man to get there to him. Here's the BCS standing brought to you by Allstate. And Utah sixth. Texas in trouble. Tennessee goes down today. And uh, unfortunately for the Vols, they lost Schaefer last week. Ainge goes down with an injury against Notre Dame. So those last two games okay. against Bandit and Kentucky are not gimmies. Not gimmies. See the national championship numbers on the wall here at the Orange Bowl for the Hurricanes. Third down and four. And they need to take it out to the 46-yard line. Berlin got the pass complete. Good for the first down. Down at the 44-yard line hitting Jalou. Hakeem Jalou, a sophomore out of New Orleans. 6'4", 188 pounds from St. Augustine High School. Wow. Couldn't have been delivered any more perfectly. No, Justin Miller's in pretty good shape, but Brock Berlin shows you the strength of his arm. And also the accuracy. I mean, it hit him right between the eight and the zero. From the 43, play action. Berlin gets this one out and threw it too tall to Parrish. And let's check back with uh, Reese Davis. What do you got for us? Ron Sylvester Froome's homecoming in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, had a 17-7 lead on Mississippi State at the half. Early in the third quarter, Omar Connor to a wide open T. Millen. We had Ramsey Robinson spinning like a top. Alabama's lead has been trimmed to three. Here comes Sly's dog. Sly's got his football team playing about as well as you can play. And things are getting tight in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, uh, uh, an upset win by Mississippi State there would really have the coffee cups rattling on Monday. Iowa State with a big win today. Berlin steps up, and again, this time he is just a little too tall for Roscoe Parrish. Well, a little, little too tall is <laughs> Roscoe's only about 5'8". So Brock Berlin, if you throw it up the ladder, he's going to need a uh, net to see his size. But he has speed. And well, you see the numbers, turnovers, Miami, one, Clemson, none. Total yards, 165 to 92. I know we'll get all the scores coming up at halftime. Did I read that right? Arizona, did they get their first conference win this afternoon? They were ahead the last time I looked. I think they got it. The guys will talk about that and a lot more at halftime. Blitz off the corner, and he just and throws this one away. The flag comes down. Did not get it back to the line of scrimmage. Tremaine Billy was the man coming on the blitz. John Lovett, the defensive coordinator. Attention to grounding. Number seven on the offense. The penalty is Lawson down at the spot. The end. Now the Clemson defense. The run. Miami's going away from the run. Yeah. And they stopped the run. 
and now they have a plan against the pass. Miami, we talked about their first 11 plays being six runs, five passes. They're not doing that same thing now. They're throwing the ball more. Brian Monroe is on to kick the left footer, only the second time that he's had to punt tonight. And Justin Miller, the dangerous one, is back deep. And this kick is off the side of his foot, a fast spinning spiral. And Miller from the 15 is going to give it a try. And the flag comes down, and it uh, looks as though Clemson is going to take over this drive deep in their own territory. Ontario Roll was down to make the tackle. So the penalty will be stepped off against the Tigers. We're going to take a timeout. 9.38 left until halftime, and we remain 10-3 Kings. So we are back 10 to 3 the score you're looking at uh, David Whitehurst uh, Charlie Whitehurst uh, dad and of course he played with the Green Bay Packers in fact for more on that here's Aaron Andrews. Well, Ron Charlie says this is really the first year that he's really relied on his dad for some advice and support the best piece of advice David Whitehurst has given his son is stick with it no matter how tough it gets. Charlie says his dad has told him tons of stories how he would have 6,000 people in the stands cheering for him one minute and then the next minute booing him. Charlie just stick with it his dad says guys. Okay Aaron you know that really goes with that position. You got to learn to take the cheers you got to learn to take the booze because you get too much credit when they win and then you get too much blame when you lose. Here are his stats Mike. His completion percentage you know not as high as it has been this year but 38 touchdowns but also in looking up Mike because of all the changes with the offensive line 17 times he's been sacked this year that's not inordinately high but he's had to throw the ball away 30 times this year that could be the difference between 50 percent and 60 percent completion new receivers new offensive line this time Charlie will go from the eye formation and they go with the running play, and that's Merriweather. And he's going to be close to the first down. It'll be third down and short. DeVaris Gooden is there to make the tackle. David Whitehurst, uh, you talked about it, Green Bay Packers, also a quarterback for Furman. The guy behind him just found out he's on TV. But, uh, you know, when you play the quarterback position, you can help your son out a little bit because of what you went through. Yeah. So here we go with the third down and one. Eight minutes, 20 seconds left until halftime. Clemson trying to hold on to the football, get it in the end zone, and going at halftime tied at 10. Give it to Merriweather. The fullback blocking turns it up the sideline, and he's not only going to have the first down, he's going to have about 25 yards more than that. Reggie Merriweather. We talked about the poor tackling the last four weeks. The arm tackles and Merriweather runs through about three missed tackles. Leading rusher on this football team, Reggie Merriweather, 377 yards rushing coming into tonight. So they got a first down, and it's a Yusuf Kelly who will check into the lineup, as we mentioned. Uh, he weighs 234 pounds, and a much more style of runner like Tia McClendon at uh, North Carolina State. And they give it to him. He tries it right up the middle and bounces off one, but will not bounce off the second. Going to be a gain of two, and McIntosh is the guy who collared it. Michael Kane, the offensive coordinator, talked about Yusef Kelly this week on the phone. He said he bench presses over 400 pounds. He's a 4-4-40 guy. We like him in this football game for tough yards. Now, those were tough yards. There's Michael Kane. Former head coach at NC State. That's right. Very nice man and very good football coach. Second down and eight. Well, that run by Merriweather a moment ago really got them into very good field position. Play calls become different and easier. Pass almost picked off McIntosh. Whoa. 
I mean, he was dreaming of six right there, and he would have been doing more than dreaming had he come down with the football. Ron, he read the eyes of Whitehurst. Number 50, drops back in coverage. He knows the football is being delivered. McIntosh had a pick. You know, I'm not so sure if Antron, uh, Antrell Roll, if he had stayed back a little bit, I think, he, I think he caught him in his peripheral vision and then dropped the football. Third down and eight. We need to go to the 47-yard line. Whitehurst over the middle. This one is picked off at the 37-yard line by guess who? Devin Hester. We talked about the fact that he has become a superior return man, but also Randy Shannon said, hey, don't forget his athletic ability and his defensive ability. He's getting better. Big play guy. Charlie Whitehurst throws his football behind. The intended receiver, Hester, is right there on Bayham. Yep, he sure did, Mike. You're exactly right. And Bayham tries to turn around to get a hand on it. And if he had been able to, he could have played defensive back. Clemson's going to have to hurry. They're late getting the defense on the field. And Miami already has lined up. Frank Gore, right side. Blasted hard at the line of scrimmage. It gained up about one by Anthony Waters. Also, Eric Coleman. We talked about Devin Hester. He's been on the field 29 plays on defense, special teams, and offense. Talk about a guy that can make a difference in a football game. And even in the kicking game, when you don't kick to him, you strip kick it, you give up yards. Not to have to kick it to number four, Hester. Well, you know, the same thing happened in the NC State game, and we talked about that. But just because of his influence, even if he's not doing it with a return, he's doing it psychologically to the other special teams. Berlin's going to run this one and step out of bounds, and he got hit out of bounds, and here comes one, two, three, four flags in. Charles Bennett is the man who's going to pick up the personal foul. Yeah, good call. Char uh, Charles Bennett hit Berlin as Berlin was coming out of, out of bounds. Well, and that's a hard situation because a, a charging oh, no. defensive end, he's not looking that closely at the line. He just sees white. RC's orange, as I should say, and just wanted to get to the quarterback. But as you can see, he was a couple of steps out, and it's going to cost him 15. It's a big series for this defense of Clemson because they played well and they have control over Miami's offense. Now to create this big penalty, give Miami good field position, a mistake. Well, after that play right there, Clemson's defense has already been on the field, 33 plays, and we still have 6-16 left to play in the second quarter. That's Leggett in motion, but they pitch it back to Gore, and looking for a spot to run, and he just keeps fighting his way, weaving his way, down around the 30-yard line, and a Quadrant Hill, again, with a good block. Number 23 had a lead block that paved the way on the touchdown run back in the opening quarter, and he got a good one at that time. They're going to place it at the 30. It'll be second down and one, so maybe a down to play with if you are Miami. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, rush yardage, you see the last three games, Clemson's defense really toughened up against the run. So here they come, and let's see what they come up with. Miami, 60 rushing yards in the ball game. Play action. They rolled it out. or oh, take it to tight end. He was there blocking. Then he got the pass, and he's going to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Still plenty of time at the 523 mark, but Justin Miller made the tackle. And, Mike, I would suggest to you a touchdown right here would be huge as far as Miami's concerned. This is big by Brock Berlin because he's going to his left. He shovels the ball out there to Ortega, who blocked and then shot to the flat. Open, wide open. You talked about a play to, to really try to do someone second and one. That was a good call. Berlin, 10 of 17, 116 yards. Ortega, out of right here in Miami, played at Gulliver Prep. And it's Gore. High stepping his way just inside the 20. Groover on the stop. Let's take a look at some of the things that Brock Berlin has done here tonight. He's been on fire the last four games. Good post route to Frank Gore. 
There's a good route to Roscoe Parrish. And out of the backfield, he hits Parrish. That's his that, was, that was his best throw. Yeah, it sure was. I mean, like like I said, when it happened, he hit him right Jala. between the eight and the zero. And Jala had just made the turn. That's the way the play is designed. Nice job at the defensive end. Ortega was there to make the catch. That's going to be a loss as Bobby Williamson is there to, uh, to make a tackle. Bobby was a tight end, and in fact, he scored a touchdown and had a sack in that game against Utah State. That was the ball game that Clemson came up with, 11 sacks of the quarterback. Well, you look at last year when Clemson, as the season went on, they got hot toward yeah. the end, and we saw them against Tennessee. Woo. They in Tennessee, played in, in Peach Bowl. Tennessee was sorry that they saw them. Yeah. I'm telling you, they lit them up down there in Atlanta. Well, in the red zone, this is what Brock Berlin has done. Eight touchdowns, no interceptions. Pressure. Got the screen, and Quadrant Hill tripped over his own line, but I think that's Chris Myers who was uh, posting up to block, and all of a sudden, uh, Chris got knocked down, and then he fell over him. And Gaines Adams, number 93, was in there. Uh, really jammed up the blockers. Good series. They were not sure if he was going to be able to play tonight because of an injured knee. Gaines Adams. John Petty. Here comes the attempt to get a place this ball down at the 29 yard line. So the 39 yard attempt. Boy, he yanked it to the left. It's going to be wide left and no good. Hey, you let Clemson around here, play around here. They had good field position, didn't take advantage of it. Uh, looks like a little of the edge has come off Miami's play. We'll see. Hi now. Well, welcome back to tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who was the last Clemson player selected in the first round of the NFL draft? That answer coming up later. Last Clemson player I don't taken know. in the first round. When I think Clemson, I think of uh, Frank Howard. You know, the grand old guy that uh, did such a great job coaching at Clemson. And, uh, the man who had the rock yeah. and started a great tradition. Great guy. First down, they rolled the pocket to the right, and that pass is completed. And stepping out of bounds uh, immediately is Aries Curry. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Aaron Andrews coming to you from Miami, Florida, 10 to nothing. The Hurricanes jumped out on top. The Clemson came back with an answer, 48-yard field goal by the part of Dean. Then they had another opportunity and were wide right on a 54-yarder, and that's how we stand. Three eighteen left until halftime. Well, they give this one to Coleman, and that's a good job of an open field tackle by Thomas Carroll. A sure stop there. But, Mike, just what I said before we went to the break, I still I see a little bit of the edge coming off both offensively and defensively of the game of the Miami Hurricanes compared to what they started with tonight. Yeah, they took the best shot. Clemson took yeah. Miami's first hit and they survived. Now, if they don't make any mistakes here, Win one, a touchdown behind or get a score here. And they're they're gonna play in the second half. This is gonna be a great game. Hands it to Coleman. Not gonna have the first down. It's a good open field stop by John Beeson. John getting a start tonight, only a red shirt freshman. One of the seven changes made by Randy Shannon on the defense tonight. Well, you watch the defensive line of Miami. They get right up in the line of scrimmage, control the line of scrimmage, take on blocks so that all of a sudden their linebackers and secondary great three can make the play. You'll get a good grade on that one because the fullback Jackson was coming pell-mell. He took him on and was there to make the tackle, his third. So here is Hester. Don't make a mistake here. Kick to him. I'd rather kick it out of bounds. They put a little pressure on him, and this is an end over end kick. And Clemson's all over the place to cover this one, and they touch it dead. A very short kick, only 36 yards. Well, the answer to tonight's Ad Black trivia question Who was the last Clemson player selected in the first round of the NFL draft? Rod Gardner, wide receiver, 2001, 15th overall by the Washington Redskins. Well, we have Todd McShea up here, he knows all about that draft. And uh, I'm sure he knew it was Rod Gardner. 
Clemson has had some receivers, skill players. It also, out there. I remember a group of linebackers that oh, came out also yeah. in the late 80s and the early 90s. They've had some Frigidaires too, right? Yep. So on first down, middle screen, this is Gore, gets by the first wave, 45, boy, that is a nice move to pick up the first down, and almost a gain of 15. Reese Davis, let's check back with you, what's going on now, partner? All right, Ron, coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, a lot of high performers here, Kirk, Trev, Mark, and Chris all here, and we'll talk about many things, including how the Vols lost more than a football game against Notre Dame this afternoon, a college station classic, and also the Axe is back. How far can Wisconsin take it? Back to our game, Gore. 10 yards, 15, counted off at 18. He's all the way down to the 37. And right now, Clemson has got to close the door because they cannot allow a hurricane touchdown right here, already down by 10 to 3. And Miami has all three timeouts left. So a lot of time for the Canes offense. Clock runs at 113. Berlin steps up. That pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted. Eric Coleman got one hand on it. That's all right, Eric. You knocked it down. I'm not sure you would have caught it with both hands for that matter. He's a big, good looking kid, though, at 6'5, 290 pounds. He Started had that tight end run. Well, you offensive know, lineman and that's right. Then he had defensive lineman. Had a sack and scored a touchdown in that uh, NC State game. And uh, they think is going to become an extremely good football player. Gore now 11 carries, 69 yards, and a touchdown. Hill into block pass, a little too far. Roscoe Parrish. But they brought the pressure. CJ Gaddis had the cover, excuse me. Yeah, they got Gaddis in man coverage against Roscoe Parrish. Gaddis was up for the challenge. He was a quarterback that switched the corner when he knew he wasn't going to be a quarterback in playing. He made the switch. Pretty good coverage. So that stops the clock, 104. It is third down. Third down to 10, and they uh, take it to the 28 and a half yard line. You look at the numbers on Brock Berlin on the season. And he'll go with the draw play. Hill. Hill breaks off a tackle. Second effort, he's going to have the first down. Put an asterisk by that one. Corey Groover is there to make the tackle, but now a new set of downs and still 56 seconds on the clock and all their timeouts, and the officials will stop the clock. And I think they're going to measure, but it certainly appears from where they spotted the ball that he is going to have the first down. Injury for Clemson. Groover is the man who was shaken up. You know, I always wondered, and I, I, I didn't have a chance to ask Corey, but how you wind up as a defensive tackle wearing a single-digit number. You don't see that real often. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we're getting through the bag of tricks yeah. for that one. <laughs> I think in number seven, I'm trying to think of football, but I think right away of Mickey Man on baseball. Now that dates me, but Mickey Man on number seven. While you're thinking of it, the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report is coming up next. 56 ticks left on the clock. Just came to me. John Elway. Well, I was going to say, how long did it take well, you to come hey, up with I, Elway? I was thinking about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Clock is running. 49 seconds down to 48. Blitz coming right up the middle. They pick it up nicely. Far sideline. Boy, he had legged open. And he underthrew this one. The offensive line of Miami really picked up the blitz mm -hmm. and gave Brock Berlin a chance to get the ball to leg it. Now, wet ball may have got away from me yeah. there. Yeah. I tell you, Leggett is such a great looking target because he's 6'4, still a string bean. He'll gain a lot of weight. He only weighs 177 and has tremendous speed. Second down and 10. You see the blitz coming off the corner. He'll pick that one up, and the pass thrown in and out of the hands. Or did he hold on? 
That's Jala. I think they're going to give him the catch. Yep, I think he juggled it and it came back down in his arms. So Akeem Jala comes up with a big reception here. Watch this play. Yep, it comes right back down. And he puts it in his chest. First and 10 Miami from the 14. Running play, Frank Gore tries to get to the outside, cuts it back up the middle, and he will score. There's a flag down. It is away from the play at the five-yard line. The result on the field is a touchdown. After the play was over, at the big ball, touch the foul. Darnell Jenkins. Yep, Darnell Jenkins with the uh, the personal foul. So the score goes on the board. Gore, that's two nice runs he's had, but this one here, the cutback, and he had everybody going over pursuing on the play. All and of a when second. you have three timeouts left, you can run the draw, and you can stop the clock if he gets stopped. Frank Gore gets stopped. So that's a great but, point, Mike. But, but that's the offense. Clemson's offense didn't do their job to milk the clock and not let any time on for Miami's offense. Yep, you are exactly right. John Petty to attempt the extra point. And he knocks it right down the middle. So let's take a timeout. 19 seconds until intermission. And our new score, Hurricane 17 at the Tigers 3. So we are back and the rain now coming down steadily and a 15 yard penalty assessed here on the kickoff. So it means that uh, they will be booting the ball from the 20 yard line. And some of the Hardy fans who were sticking around here others have gone for a uh, hot chocolate and cocoa during the halftime or maybe even headed to the parking lot. It's getting pretty damp. Here's the kick. Mark Gent will kick this one off and it'll be returned from the 13. And it's Miller. Miller loose. 45 at the 50 and what an open field tackle at the 50 yard line a return of 37 yards and it was Sonoris Moss who stayed at home to make the tackle here's that catch Jala makes the catch it sets up the touchdown run Kevin Everett the tight end gets a great block here here's what's talking about getting two blocks on one time the offensive tackle, tight end Everett, then goes off to the linebacker and opens it up for Frank Gore. And here's where you got to be thinking of you. Charlie Whitehurst, at least get three. You got 11 seconds. You got full complement of timeouts. You need one throw or two throws here to get in field goals range. Sets to throw. Drills it. Got a man wide open. Stepping out of bounds at the 32 is Bayham. Now you got to kick the field goal. Four seconds. That's good throw by Charlie Whitehurst. Good call by Michael O'Kane. Clear out. Let Bam come underneath. Set up the field goal. So Jad Dean, who already has a kick of 48 yards, comes out. And we'll see if that personal foul called against Darnell Jenkins on the touchdown play. If it uh, winds up costing the Hurricanes points. From the 37, a 47 yard attempt, and it is raining hard again. Here's the kick. Plenty of distance and wide right. No good. So we are at halftime. And the Miami Hurricanes score on their last offensive possession to go on top by two touchdowns, 17 to 3. Take another look at this field goal attempt. Well, this kid's got quite a leg. No problem, but it is wide to the right, and let's go back to the studio. 17 to 3, your halftime score. Now here's Reese Davis for the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. Reese.
So some of the sights and sounds of the first half. We stand 17 to 3. The Miami Hurricanes on top in this one. And Mike Godfrey, as I wonder out loud to you what has been said at halftime, that last little spurt by the Hurricanes, they went in with the momentum at halftime. They they did. And I think it's imperative that Clemson take this opening kickoff and go down and get points. They got to get a touchdown to stay in this football game because Miami's got the momentum, as you said. Brock Berlin's hitting on all cylinders. Uh, Gore ran the ball well in the second uh, quarter. And you look at these stats, here's the one thing. Figure all those yards you give. You gave up, uh, if you're Miami's defense, and you've only given up 41 yards rushing to Clemson. Here's the other stat right here, two for eight. If you're going to pull the upset, you've got to stay on the field. Well, we'll see what they got in mind as you look at third down conversions as well. Did the team great there, three of eight and two of eight. Miller, number nine, and Aries Curry, number one. And they stand in the nine formation trying to figure out which direction the kick is going to come. And it's going to go to Miller at the goal line. 15, 20. Still on his feet and now bumped hard out of bounds at around the 31 yard line. And look who knocked him out of bounds. It was Devin Hester. Let's check on the sideline with Aaron Andrews. Aaron. Well, Ron, Clemson head coach Tommy Bowden yelling at his team in the tunnel. You need to come out with some fire. He told me his biggest complaint from that first half is the tackling. He said it was very, very poor. He said Miami is challenging us and we're not accepting it. I asked him about adjustments for his offense. He said we need to find a way to run the ball. Ron? Okay. You know, Aaron and he's he's being true to what he said from the get-go this week he said we're not very good statistically at running the football but yet we've got to make it happen if we're going to have a chance to win Whitehurst had his people covered and then that gets that one off that's Chauncey Stuckey the first time that we've seen him tonight he is a speedster who is not 100 percent has had some problems with injuries of late no I I echo what Aaron's talking about because this drive right here will set the tone for this football game. Yeah. Tommy Bowden knows this is an important drive, as important as any in this football game. Showing him that decent field position. With a second down at about five and a half. And they scrimmage from just across their own 35-yard line. And to go with Merriweather. Merriweather off the left side is going to be harnessed before he gets the first down. Tavares Gooden with still another stop. And Tavares only a sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. He has played well tonight. Now we go to third down, where Clemson has not been very good. Two of eight on third down conversions so far. Whitehurst looks to the sideline, gets his signal of what play they want him to call. Third down, and having to take it to the 41, they need about two, two and a half yards. Sticky in motion as they roll the pocket and lobs this one, just going to throw it away. And I go back to the point that Mike made in the first half. The, the further you run getting toward that sideline, it becomes a 12th defender, a 13th defender. It's just the odds of you making a completion are really, really rare. I think that's the third time they've rolled the pocket and they've come up empty. Miami's got too much speed to let you outside. Cole Chasen, the sophomore out of Roswell, Georgia, back to kick. Devin Hester is the deep man. We mentioned in the first half, he is prepared to soccer style kick it if need be, but they've been coming after him, so forcing him to kick it away. Here's Hester from the 17. Tries to reverse it, goes back into the sideline, comes and stayed at home, and does a nice job of stopping him short of the 25. 44 on the kick and five on the return. Tonight's game track is brought to you by Pioneer. Opening touchdown, opening series. Frank Gore. Here is a new personal best. Uh, actually, that miss right there by Dean, uh, the one from 53 yards. And that's how we stand, 17-3, to as Miami came up with the last possession touchdown of the first half. Quadrant Hill back in the ballgame at fullback. And he'll give it to Gore. 
Hill is blocking, breaks it right up the middle, has five, has ten, cut it off at about 16 yards as they will take him out to the 37-yard line. Ty Hill finally saved what might have been a touchdown run. Good job of blocking by that offensive front. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Dan Warner said the emphasis is on the running game this week. Frank Gore, you see the hole. Offensive line with a good blocks up front. Frank Gore having a great game. Yep, he really is. 99 yards at this juncture, Mike. An average of almost eight yards per carry, and he has two touchdowns. He gets it again, takes this one back up inside, puts a head down at his foot, but he'll have 100 yards after that carry, and it was Waters who made the tackle on him. Clemson needs to stop this drive because if uh, Miami goes down, a dagger in the heart. Gore, an interesting story. Two season-ending knee injuries. And he still he works very very hard and has gotten himself back in great playing condition. They initially shot for 20 carries a game and now it's more than that as he has hit on this play and knocked down by Anthony Waters. That's a good individual stop. And now it's going to be a third down for the Hurricanes and they lost about a half yard on that play. They've got to take it out to the 47 and a half yard line. And as you can see Gore comes out. And they'll insert Roscoe Parrish into the lineup. Remember, Roscoe Parrish is the guy that Brock Berlin likes to deliver the ball to. Officials uh, were looking at the band, so they may be going over to tell the coaches. About the band. Tuba section. They're pointing at uh, somebody up there in the area around the band. Larry Coker with a wry grin on his face. He got a kick out of whatever they were telling him. Going to silence the band. We'll see. They don't have time to play right. They're wringing out their clothes right now. It's been so wet. I don't know what they could have done. We'll get a clarification. I think on it. they were playing when Miami was calling the signals. Stack set to the near side. Berlin under pressure, and they get to him. He is sacked, and that is Pinnock. The ball came loose. But it will stay in the possession of Miami, and it's going to be fourth down. So a good sequence by the Tiger defense to open the second half. They just need the offense to do their part. Charles Bennett with the first hit. Good coverage. Third time that they have punted tonight. This is Brian Monroe. Youngster who came up as a soccer style place kicker and then learned how to uh, to punt by going to a Ray guy camp. Not one of his uh, better efforts right there. Very high and not returnable. Buck Ortega will touch it dead. And that punt right there is good for 44 yards. So we are back 17 to 3 Miami on top and we now have uh, settled Bandgate. And undoubtedly it was not the band but the players were hearing whistles and we'll we'll talk more about it after this first play right here with the first and ten by the Clemson Tigers straight ahead with this running play and it's not going to go for very much Aaron Andrews let's check with you what well, happened down there like you mentioned the players were hearing whistles they looked at the officials waiting for a call the officials said hey it didn't come from us they pointed over to the Clemson band said stop blowing your whistles Clemson band director pointed over to the fans and said it wasn't us it was these fans so try to see if anything else happens Ron <laughs> Well, I, I believe the band director. I don't think that he would, with malice and forethought, lie here on national television. I think it was the other fans. Don't know who they were representing, but anyway, players were confused and they got it squared away. Whitehurst going on top. Going to go long into double coverage, and the ball's knocked away. And it's Kelly Jennings who was back there to knock it away from Aries Curry. 
the intended Eric, receiver. Eric Curry, the speedster in Miami's got the right call on Randy Shannon with double coverage against Curry. Kelly Jennings, pretty good shape. I'm gonna tell you, Mike, this has been fun tonight watching speed against speed on the outside. Both of these teams, hey, wide yeah, receivers. Yeah, really blessed with uh, just exceptional speed. Right now it's third down, third and seven, and the Clemson wants to hold on to the football. They've got to take it to the 34-yard line. They're down by 14 points. Whitehurst stands tall, throws the pass right there and got it complete, and that's Kelvin Grant. His 23rd reception on the year, good for 13 yards, and Jennings again with the tackle. Yeah, Whitehurst stood in there, uh, delivered the football on time to Grant. Actually, that's his first catch tonight, so that gives him 22 on the season. Big play guy, very talented. Here they going to go with uh, Whitehurst holding on to the football. Not sure the wisdom of that. And Trail Roll is there to make the tackle and pat him on the top of the head here. In Trail Roll, we talked to him the other day and he talked about we asked is the national championship still in sight he said no and i was surprised but they need a lot of things yeah. he's a realist uh, a lot of things could happen they could leave it there but the likelihood of all of the, those things happening are, are very very unlikely gonna have to hurry play clock down to two got it off whitehurst zips the ball oh! Most intercepted, and I'm telling you, Hester not only was looking for a second pick, he was looking for pick six. Yeah, they were reading the eyes of Charlie Whitehurst. Sometimes Charlie will stare down Lock the on. receiver, and uh, right here, Devin Hester reads the eyes all the way. A bam, the receiver, almost like Hester was the receiver. Bayham did not even realize that he had gone past him. He was so quick. Third down. They need the 49. Flag comes down. They used too much uh, time. Going to cost them five. So rather than third down and eight, now it's going to be third down and 13. The layup game. Offense number six. It's a five-yard penalty. Still third down. I want to say this. Uh, yeah. Two weeks ago, we got on the officials. This group is doing a very good job. Oh, they are. They're, they're doing uh, a terrific job. They're moving. They're running. They're they're doing a very good job. So let's hope you haven't jinxed us. Third down and thirteen. Miami showed blitz on the outside and stayed at home. Here's Whitehurst. He has got him there and open inside the 30-yard line. And it is going to be first down Curry. Against Merriweather, Brandon Merriweather. Well, that was a nice pitch and catch of 37 yards. You see the inside technique, bum man with two deep coverage behind of Merriweather, but Curry hit down the middle, well-thrown ball by Charlie Whitehurst. This to me is disconcerting. I know a lot of teams do it, but to come to the line to get set, those linemen are down for such a long time. Merriweather, big opening inside the 10 at the five, touchdown. Good for 27 yards. That's why they do it, though, because they take a picture of the defense, get to call in. Sometimes it really hurts the offense, but on that play, it was the right call for the right defense. Boy, was it ever. 
And I mean, that was a great one-two punch on the 37-yard completion and then the run by Merriweather. And just like that, the extra point attempt is up and good by Dean. And let's take a timeout. Eight minutes left in our ball game, and our new score, Kane 17, Tigers 10. ESPN's College Football Saturday Primetime, brought to you by Singular. Text the word PLAYER to 64444 to vote for the Singular Player of the Week. And AFLAC. Ask about it at work. Well, we are back. One of the big uh, cruise ships over in uh, Biscayne Bay Harbor. Now, the reason Gooden is on the telephone, he might be getting blistered a little bit because a, a bad oh. pursuit angle. And after the kick, Mike oh. Gottfried's going to yeah. show you Real what bad. happened bad. and why he had to talk upstairs to Randy Shannon. No, that wasn't a friendly call. Here comes the kick. This one is short. And uh, Hester's going to take it at the 18. Tries to get to the sideline. And boy, boy, does he take a hit at the 20. Blindsided. And it looks as though that that was Kyle Browning. One more look at this hit right here. Watch Browning. He doesn't see him. And then pow. Because of the pooch, Devin Hester really doesn't have time yeah. to get away from the coverage. After this play right here, we'll go back to uh, to what we were talking about on the touchdown. First and ten, Miami Hurricane. Tyrone Moss is in the game at tailback, replacing Frank Gore at the moment. Good play action. Sets deep. Pressure is on from Clemson. And now he's just going to throw this one away. Okay, Michael, the All touchdown. Right. Ron, here's what happens. The defensive end, Pat is going to go down. Ben Hall is going to block him. But watch Gooden right here, and then watch the free safety. Bad angles, bad angle. Gooden steps up. Now he's got to close. He doesn't make the play. Now three misses a tackle. A poor tackling football team. Last four weeks. Well, and you could see Tavares Gooden just ran himself right out of the play. He didn't have a chance to make the tackle. Quadrant Hill in the ball game now at tailback. High pass, and they give it to Hill. Hit instantaneously. Corey Groover is right there to just knock him down at the line of scrimmage. And I'll tell you, the message that was handed out at halftime not only was received, but is being well represented on the field by Clemson. Well, I go back to Miami. They don't have a lot of leadership on the field. They lost a lot of veteran football players last year. Brock Berlin's got to be the leader on offense. Here comes a big third down play. Third, and they need to take it to the 20-yard line. About to go into seven minutes left, third quarter. Berlin stepping up, throws this one, got a man open. He has it complete. And then he steps out of bounds, and that's Jallo, Akeem Jallo. Good for 14 yards. And Mike, here's a guy that is, talk about youth. Jala is a sophomore, a young sophomore, hasn't played that much, but he shows a lot of skills. See the speed, he pushes off the corner, Ty Hill, and then he breaks. Good route to the sideline, Brock Berlin, senior leadership with a good throw. Jala 6'4", Lance Leggett, the freshman out of Arlington, Texas, 6'4". Big targets for the quarterbacks to throw to here for years to come for that matter. Frank Gore checks back at a tailback. They use him to block, then to set the screen, and he does the smart thing. He just threw that one into the ground. Trey Taylor had read it like their most, like their favorite book. May have been his own blitz. Trey Tate just stepped back. He was right there. Maurice Fountain also. You've heard me say for years, you've got to answer a score. Clemson has scored. Miami has to answer. Larry Coker knows. This game could get away from them. And it also goes back to the thing you said in the first half. Miami, even though they came out with great intensity, allowed Clemson to stick around. And for a well-coached football team, you can't do that because they'll be there. This pass too short. Roscoe Parrish incomplete. And now it's going to be third down and ten. And instead of playing ahead of the chains, as Miami did early on in this ball game, they're playing behind the chains. 
Every now and then they get away from the run. And they start to throw the football. Not that that pass play wasn't open. It was open. Roscoe Parrish wide open. Berlin has missed five of his last seven pass attempts. Third and ten. There's Frank Gore out here, the running back. And we can see they need to take it all the way to the 43-yard line. Quick pass right over the middle. Got it complete. That's Parrish. Look out, he's loose. And he gets a block up the sideline. And it's a good thing that Jamal Fudge got away from the block, which took out one Clemson player. Otherwise, that would have been a very long touchdown, as it was. Good for 29 yards on a third and ten. How about yeah. that? Again, the third down. John Lovett's defense in exactly what they want to be in. Hit the slant, missed tackles by Clemson. Good block by Leggett, and uh, Miami's in business. You know, Leggett, for a skinny kid, it really block blocks him. well. <laughs> Doesn't mind coming up and hitting the bigger guy. Fumbles the snap and gets right back down on it at the 38-yard line. Bobby Williamson applying pressure, but Berlin was right there. You see him patting Joel Rodriguez on the head here. Probably saying it was my fault. That came out too quickly. He did pull up. Yeah, sure did. But Miami and Brock Berlin like being behind the chains here in the third <laughs> quarter. Then that's when they do the damage. Second down at about 11. Clock runs now under six minutes remaining. Third quarter. Pitch it back into the boundary. Boy, there was nothing for Moss. Moss gets banged hard. Anthony Waters not just making tackles, but I mean hurtful tackles, Mike. That was the play Frank Gore scored on. The motion, man coverage, crack back, but you, you can see that Clemson has really done a good job at halftime of pressuring that play before it develops. So it's third down, ninth play of the drive. This all started back at the 20-yard line. Clemson showing blitz. They stay at home. They do come off the corner. Berlin right over the middle. Whoa, the ball is dropped by Darnell Jenkins. They did have a defender coming right at him, but he also had an opportunity to catch the ball cleanly. That had to be a catch and then run for yeah. the first down. I don't think they'd have got the first down. So you see number 39, Brian Monroe, come in to punt. I said his last effort was not his best, but he wound up with 44 yards on it. The kid is very deceiving. And also, he plays kicks besides kicking off. And he said in practice, he told me on Thursday, he has kicked one from 67 yards. That's pretty good reserve to have. Ball bounces, goes into the end zone. The Gunners were down there, but they could not down it. So the punt, 39 yards, and we will go away for a timeout. 17 to 10, Miami. So we are back. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Aaron Andrews. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl. And our situation, 17 to 10. Miami had a lead of 17 to 3, but in the third quarter, the Clemson Tigers have come out scratching. Whitehurst sets, throws the ball, got man-on-man -man coverage, and has it complete to Dwayne Coleman out of the backfield. Coleman versus the middle linebacker, Roger McIntosh. And it's good for 22 yards. Charlie Whitehurst would like to have led Dwayne Coleman a little further, but the completion's good. Well, he really he takes a to shot. Finish. Shot. Yep. Right. That was Javon Manton. He doesn't have any sacks this year, and the defensive uh, coordinator <laughs> reminded him. Well, he That's got a hurry on that play, I'll tell you. Running play, Merriweather. He's going to take it out across the 50 and close to nine yards on the play. I like what Michael O'Kane, the offensive coordinator, is doing. Mixing the run in here against a Miami defense that's been suspect against the run the last four games. Clock runs were about to hit the four minute mark of the third quarter. Miami by seven points and Clemson trying to close the gap there. 
They're on a three-game winning streak, trying to make it four. Merriweather, nothing to the right, and he'll try to take it to the left. A gain of absolutely nothing, really. It's got to be third down and two. Entrell Roll was there to make the tackle. You can see Merriweather clapping his hands. I think he realized he should have just taken the original path to the right and maybe picked up a half yard. It was like a maze, though. There yep. was nothing there. <laughs> he could have gone anywhere. He wouldn't have got a yard. So here's a big one. Third down. They need to take it to the 47-yard line. And see where the yellow line is. They are very, very close. Whitehurst with an audible. Four seconds on the play clock. Blitz off the corner. Looked in, and he's got it. What a nice pitch and catch right there. Kelvin Grant. Good for 15 yards. You're exactly right. What a good catch, oh. Dabo Sweeney, the offensive uh, receiver coach, has really stayed on Calvin Grant. Told him to focus and keep focusing. That is a great reception against Kelly Jennings. Okay, the two best passes he has thrown tonight is on the quick slant. Oh, right there, Mike, on that side. Right. You're, you're right. Perfect on both slants. So a first down. They have it at the 36-yard line of Miami. Far sideline, going to go on top. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage. The ball tipped in the air, and it's going to be incomplete as it went right back to Grant, and it was Kelly Jennings on the cover. Kelly is shaking his head right now, but he wasn't so sure about 30 seconds ago. Now he's in great shape here to deflect the ball away with his right hand. Grant listed at 6'2", and he looks a little bit taller than that. Jump ball right there. Yep. So it's second and ten. And those Miami corners come up as though they're going to play bump. This may be a draw play here. They've hit them on some draws in the 4-2 defense. Bumble the ball. Scramble for it at the 40-yard line. And Whitehurst just took his eye off of it. You see him slapping his other hand. Merriweather made the recovery, but he tried to look too quickly to hand the ball off, it appeared. They were going to run the draw against the 4-2 defense, but uh, Charlie Whitehurst drops the football. So loss of four, third down. They're going to take this ball all the way to the 26-yard line. Tommy Bowden thinking right now, guys, we have had such a good drive. Let's don't kill it right now by shooting ourselves in the foot. And a timeout has been called. And it's been taken by the Miami Hurricanes. So we will hold it right here with two minutes and 24 seconds left in the third. Tomorrow night at ESPN, it's Sunday Night Football. Jeff Garcia and the Cleveland Browns look to once again defeat Ray Lewis and the Baltimore Ravens. Browns and the Ravens also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Coverage begins with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. That's 19 days of primetime football on ESPN. ESPN 2 and ABC continues on day number 11. Those guys don't like each other. The Ravens and Browns. Jamal Lewis back for the first time in this game. Here's a man right here that has only four losses oh, in his four years coaching. Here it is. 91% winning percentage. But he knows that his team, something that needs to continue to ignite them. And one of the things that has happened is youth particularly on defense. It's not that they're particularly young players. They haven't played that much. And that's that's the worst kind of youth that you could have, lack of experience. Yeah, they make some mistakes. We saw the touchdown run. We missed tackles, the bad angles. We talk about Larry Coker, only four losses as a head coach. Never goes to the dance unhappy. <laughs> Okay, we got three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen, which of course is the right. It's third down and 14 yards to pick up the first down for Clemson. Whitehurst from the shotgun. Throws his ball and it is almost intercepted. Charlie Whitehurst will make some mistakes. He's thrown into coverage again. Greg Three sent back in too deep coverage. Greg Three, you're right that he almost came up with the pick. 
And in fact, he had to, covered. Yeah, he had to come a pretty good distance. Boy, he went so high. Fifth time that Clemson has had to punt tonight with the non completion, no opportunity for Jad Dean to attempt a field goal. And here's the kick. He kicks it away from Hester, far sideline, and that's going to be pretty doggone effective as it'll go out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Official continues to walk, and he's finally going to stop at the 11 yard line. Well, to get a complete schedule or just learn more about high definition, log on to ESPN.com and search HD. Tomorrow, NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. Eastern, NFL Primetime, 7.30 Eastern. The Browns against the Ravens, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. ESPN HD, the big picture in sports. It is fantastic. Mike and I have... The opportunity to see an HD monitor every week that we work off of right here in the booth. I didn't know a picture could be so good. <laughs> and per two. Particularly so good, yes. Frank Gore in the ball game, a tailback again. That's Moss in motion. Throws out in the flat, and that one is way overthrown for Humphrey, the fullback. Accuracy in the first quarter, really good. Since then, it's been a little spotty for him. And he had the open receiver, Humphrey, in the flat, too high. I thought they'd run the ball on first down with four in the ball game. 16 of 31, 183 yards for Brock Berlin. Here they come with the running play, and there's nothing for Gore. He is going to be knocked down for a loss at the 10-yard line as we take a look at what he has done so far this evening. Breaks in the secondary, a touchdown, powerful running. Toss sweep in the first touchdown, first quarter. Got a good block by Hill. That's right. You can see 23 out there. Look at, at this one on the cutback. Just before the half, yep. hit the draw play. You like to see that. He came back from the injuries you talked about. Two. You like to see success. Two season ending injuries. Yep, that is really stick to it. It's going to go very long. Got a receiver out there, but it's well overthrown. You can see Sonoris Moss, the intended receiver. He's out of Carroll City, which is right here in Miami. Big series by Clemson's defense. Should get pretty good field position for Charlie Whitehurst. You know, one of the things that we have not said anything about tonight, Greg Olson is the normal long snapper. And he has given way uh, because of a broken wrist to uh, John Rockford. And I wonder if Clemson might not come after this punt. High pass, but nope, they've got the return on. And it's a good coverage kick. Very high. Spiral will turn over. And from the 43 yard line, uh, the tackle almost made, and then finally he gets away. Is uh, Buck Ortega who finally made the stop? 47 yards in the kick and eight on the return. Here's the standings in the ACC. Mike. The reason this is important uh, is for Miami. They got one loss. Virginia, Virginia Tech rolling along. Virginia Tech. Uh, we saw Virginia. Virginia, very fine football team. Virginia Tech. We saw them make against USC. Could have won that football game that we had. Very young football team. Let me tell you something. I want to give uh, North Carolina credit also. They came very close Push and them. maybe should have had an opportunity to win that thing late until a sack took them out of it. This is Merriweather. Boy, he's going to have the first down and a gain of about 14 yards on the play. I mean, three made the tackle on him. But they suffered a quarterback sack that took them out of field goal range. And the 54-yarder that they tried was only about three yards short. So, anyway. Uh, John Bunning's done a good job yep. rallying his football team. Beat NC State, beat Miami. Well, they moved the sticks. It is a first down. Under a minute left to play in the third quarter. 40 seconds and counting. You can see on the play clock, he's uh, still got plenty of time at six. And he's going to go with the run again. And Merriweather, very patient by Clemson, saying, Why do we have to be in a hurry? We get a score, we get a tie game. 
Now here are the ramifications, Mike, of that uh, loss last week up at Chapel Hill. Here's the big one, Ron. BCS. About 14 million, huh? Went <laughs> 14 million reasons. It went from three to ten. That's right. The Mula. So that is the end of the third quarter. And as a change ends and head for the final 15, let's take a timeout. Miami 17, Clemson 10. We'll be right back. Back and the score by quarters. Miami jumped out on the top 10 to nothing. Clemson with a 48 yard field goal made a 10 3. Then Miami answered just before halftime and had the momentum. And now Clemson has come back with the momentum in the third quarter and has cut it to a one touchdown ball game. And they are driving. Second down. They're going to throw back pass. Got a man wide open. And that is Curry up the sideline. And Curry finally bumped out of bounds by Jennings. And that is more than enough for the first down. Go back to that play in the first quarter where they tackled Curry. When they did the same play, they faked it to him. Now he comes open. Nobody grabs him. He's wide open. The crossing action because of man coverage. Curry comes wide open. So the new line of scrimmage are going to place it down at about the 17 and a half yard line. This thing is getting interesting. And when it appeared back in the first half that Miami just might run away and hide, and that's not the case at all. Here come the Tigers. They go with Merriweather with the run back into the boundary. And not much doing right there as Gooden stayed at home along with three. Yeah, the Kings have not been good in the red zone. We talked about their defense. First four games allowed just one score. Last three games, uh, the Matador defense, they've been uh, they missed tackles again, the mistakes. Well, we talked about off the top of the telecast tonight, in the last three games, 100 points, and they've given up almost 1,500 yards, and that is just very, very, just not Miami's way of no. playing defense. Has not been for a long time. Well, young, inexperienced players. That's Curry in motion back into the boundary. They're looking to throw to him again and again. It. And Whitehurst may have gotten it there a little bit late. Yeah. This time a good play by Gooden to push him out of bounds. But every time you get the, the ball in his hands, you're in you're in harm's way. Well, without a doubt. I was at Rivals.com this week. They're a recruiting organization in Nashville, Tennessee. They told me about Miami's recruiting. They always get great players. They, they're lined up. Randy Shannon, the defense coordinator, they're lined up to have a bonanza in recruiting this year. So Randy Shannon knows that they got to keep them away from this third down and seven. You can see by the yellow line. Clemson must take it to the seven yard line and they go with the running play. Merriweather puts a head down and he is not going to have the first down. They're going to spot him. You can see two yards short. Now Mike Godfrey do you go for the field goal. Do you try to go for the fourth down. A lot of time left run. How short they are they're two yards short. This is why they're paying Tommy Bowden a lot of millions of dollars here. I think I think you take the field goal here. Stuckey, you could see we talked about his injury. I would take he, the time out and talk about it. Stuckey goes limping off the field, so they will not have him in their arsenal as far as if they do decide to go to it. You can see the youngster limping on the left foot. And Tommy Bowden has just called a Clemson timeout, so they'll talk it over and think it over just a little bit more. Matt Weiner, let's check back with you. What do you have for us? All right, Ron, we got a great finish in Tempe, Arizona State. First Texas putting it on Oklahoma State with 49 unanswered points after a 35-7 loss. We'll get to that Arizona State game in just a bit. Well, uh, Smokey the Cannon's been firing a lot tonight. Wow. Yeah, well, they uh, got in uniform. They got in step. So the timeout was called, and as they look over their options, I have to go with what you said. We see Jad Dean, number seven, who has shown a very Great live kicker. leg. And uh, pregame warm ups, we always tape the kickers. You can see these are wide right, wide left, another wide. That doesn't give you a lot of uh, hope if you're a coaching 
and you're looking at him in the pregame, but we saw a great leg yep. on him. He made a dis where the distance that he's kicking from is uh, considerably shorter than uh, than where he was missing in pregame. Yeah. One thing about the Bowdens now, it's not beyond them to fake this. Yes, you're right. <laughs> but three is really good here. Get you within one score to win the game. Well, Mike, this is a 26-yard attempt. And being a right footer with the natural hook, this should be an easy field goal for him. Yep, it's going to be a fake, and they pitch it back to him, and he's going to run and gain at the corner, and he may even get a face mask as he was tackled hard out of bounds by Andrell Roll. And you were right on. It's a great call because you, everybody in this ballpark thinks it's a field goal. Tommy Bowden sends a message. I always say every week that coaches send a message by their play calls. You could see the youngster rubbing around his nose. He thought he was bleeding. I don't even know if that's what the flag is, but it appeared as though he was grabbed by the face mask. Yep, that is what they called. Good call. Steven Jackson with a good block. Fullback number 35. You know, there's an Antrell roll. I wondered why. Here's the fake. That's a good block by the fullback on roll. And then uh, the play came over the top of him. Wondered why the trainers were running out, and roll was all the way out of bounds and out of sight. He was shaken up, so he comes off the field for one play. Well, Jad Dean, he took off like a running back. Yeah, he did. He had good speed. Got to have an athlete. I don't know if he wears contacts or not, but he looks as though that grab in the face mask really shook him up. Clemson quickly to the line of scrimmage. And Merriweather, touchdown! New ball game. Steven Jackson, give him credit with an outstanding block. Two in a row for him. Tommy Bowden with a very good call on the fake field goal. Michael O'Kane, the offensive coordinator, then they finish it off right here. Reggie Merriweather, only 5'8", but uh, power. Jad Dean comes back on the field, and you could bet this one is not a fake. Good pass, ball is down, and he splits him. This youngster is, uh, is easy to like. Only a sophomore out of Greenwood, South Carolina. Let's take a break. Tied at 17. So we're tied at 17, and here's one note for you uh, trivia buffs. Merriweather, his second rushing touchdown, and it ties a career high for him. Now the most important thing you can do is keep that ball away from Hester. Roll got hit hard by Jackson, the fullback. Good look at Hester right there as Dean prepares to kick off. Jenkins is back there with him as well. And it is for the pooch kick and is caught at the 37-yard line. Now, you didn't have the long return, but the respect gets you great field position. Leggett on the fair catch. Tonight's game track brought to you by Pioneer. Gore, two first-half rushing touchdowns. You can see him stepping high. And then Clemson comes right back. Merriweather. And here's the fake. This is well executed. Oh, Dean. Great. Then he is tackled with a face mask by Roll. And that's the reason for the half the distance to the goal penalty. And that's how we stand at 17 apiece. For those of you who left us early and said, well, that looks like it's going to be a route. Nothing doing. Quick pass into the flat. And that is to Ortega. And he is going to be stopped after a gain of only three. Matt Weiner, let's check back to the studio. What do you got for us? All right, now we have that Arizona State finish. Andrew Walter, a four-touchdown, 413-yard day, but he needed a final-minute drive to beat Stanford. Matt Miller on the other end. Sun Devils hang on, 34-31. All righty. Here in our ballgame, eight plays, 50 yards. That drive took two minutes and 18 seconds. And the one-yard run by Merriweather to tie it at 17 apiece. And now a timeout has uh, been called. And we'll take it with him. Is that Miami who called that one? Yep. They used their second here in the second half. We'll be right back. ESPN's College Football Saturday Primetime. 
Brought to you by Labatt Blue. Break out the blue. And Singular Wireless. So we are back, and Mike Gottfried with our score tied at 17 apiece. After having only, I believe it was 53 first quarter yards, Clemson has now gone on top in total offense, 333 to 299 in this ball game. With some good calls to Curry, the wide receiver, good routes. Here comes the pitch, Gore. Boy, a nice job of containing. They turned it back in and then just swamped it. It may be a gain of one. Tremaine Billy made the stop. And Aaron Andrews, what do you have for us? Ron, an update from Miami sideline. Antrell Roll came out with a foot injury. His right foot. Trainers are retaping him. He's going to try it out and then try to head back out onto the field. Ron? Okay. And I can tell you, Aaron, while you were giving that report, number three, Frank Gore, came limping to the sideline as well after that carry. So it is third down for the Hurricanes, and if they want to hold on to this football, they got to take it all the way out to the 47-yard line. There's Roscoe Parrish. He's the guy that Brock Berlin looks for. Yep, he said he's my go-to guy. They pick up the blitz well. The ball knocked out at the line of scrimmage. Berlin could not get it over the outstretched arms of Gaines Adams, 6'5", 250, a sophomore out of Greenwood, South Carolina. And he's used primarily for pass rush. Not very good against the run yet. So that means more of Brian Monroe. Averaging almost 43 yards per punt tonight. And the left footer drives this one. Really fine kick. Spiral turns over all the way back to the 13-yard line. And finally, the tackle is made at the 29. That's going to be 49 on the punt and 16 on the return to Miller. They talked about Miami players this week. Do you still have to swagger? Won 174, 176 games leading after the third quarter, which means the fourth quarter has been Miami. And as I look at this Miami football team, they're stunned a little bit. Yep, they are. The leadership is not there. Now, Antrell Roll is trying to get back on the field. They got so many young, inexperienced football players on the field. So here we go with first down. Clemson scrimmaging from their own 29-yard line. And if Clemson goes by the book as they have been, they're not going to be in a hurry. They will want to run the football as well as throw it. And that quick pass is uh, overthrown, intended for Curry. And Hester up there covering on him. That is a heck of a matchup as far as two really good athletes who can wow. fly. Two good players. You talk about Rondo. Those stats, when they're ahead at the third quarter, Miami has been a dominating program. Owned the Orange Bowl. Owned the fourth quarter. Clemson trying to get into that win column you see that uh, the home winning straight 58 running play straight up the middle Merriweather breaks a tackle and I'll tell you what three may not make a bigger tackle tonight because he kept him from getting the first down and if they force him to punt put an asterisk by that play he looked for the world as though he was going to have the first down and look at this hit coming up right there bang and he stopped him in his tracks you're right about to hit but before that, a lot of missed tackles. Yes. Larry Coker knows. I mean, Larry Coker is one of the best coaches in the country. He knows his team is not tackling. Well, let's see if uh, Clemson can pick it up. They need about a yard, maybe a tad more. Hit at the line of scrimmage, and that's what I'm talking about. Give credit to three. He stopped him on an open field tackle, and now Clemson's going to have to kick the football back. Yep. McIntosh and Brandon Merriweather combining on the stop. No place to go, as you see, as you're coming into your living room. Roger McIntosh, Reed. They're short. Brandon Merriweather also. Shaken up. Yep. He is down, and the young man that the trainers are attending to. Good defense by Randy Shannon. Short yardage. Got control of the line of scrimmage. 
Well, he's holding that right arm. They had a big injury on defense. Santonio Thomas. Exactly. At NC State. The guy that did a lot for the defensive line of Miami. Well, actually, they lost two players. Yeah. They lost Thomas. They also lost McLean's. And uh, while they continue to check Merriweather over, we'll take a timeout. We're tied at 17. So Merriweather uh, continues to just grimace in pain on the sideline. I believe it's the left wrist that, uh, that he injured. One thing about this formation, you got three linemen there, so you're not going to fake anything. Well, it's a driving kick. Jason has been really good tonight. Roscoe Parrish from the 20 looks for a spot to run, and I'll tell you, most people would have been stopped in his tracks, and he picked up 10. Aaron Andrews, what do you got for us? Well, Ron, you and Mike talking about how it looks like Miami is losing their edge. I can tell you when their offensive line came to the bench moments ago, Joel Rodriguez, their center, was screaming to his teammates, they're playing basic defense. Get it together. They're playing basic defense. Now, the reason why the offensive line is struggling is because this guy behind me, Eric Winston, injured in the Georgia Tech game, tore all three ligaments in his knee. Dan Werner telling us yesterday they had him. They'd be in a different position right now. Ron? Well, that's, that's for sure. He was an outstanding tight end, but he had a lot of competition last year with the Winslow here, so they moved him into tackle and actually did him a favor because he will play a long time in the pros. He has excellent feet. He's coming back to Miami next year to play his final season. If he can get over that injury to his knee and watching him and the adjustment he made, Mike, wow. And he's a huge guy. He'll be a great player. Came here as a tight end, as you said. Can run real well. Great leadership. He and Cedric Benson were on the same high school team out in the Permian Basin. Won a state championship there last year. Berlin, oh, he shouldn't have thrown that. That's going to cost him grounding. Just not a smart play. Brock, I mean, he is, in fact, it was very close to his knee being yeah. down, which meant the penalty flag would not have been thrown, but he's going to be caught here. Intentional grounding, six offense. The penalty is lost it down at the spot of the foul. Loss it down is the yeah. uh, thing that hurts you the most. And Mike, here's the other thing as you watch what happens being pressured, steps up, and, and just before he went down, he threw it. That's when the grounding was called. Here's the bad thing. If you don't pick up yardage on this play, you also field get position. Clemson a very good field position coming back. Well, I want to go back to what we talked about. I said Miami looks a little stymied. It's because Sean Taylor, all those guys, DJ Williams, all those guys went to the NFL. So you got a young football team right here. That's a big play right here with a third down and 17. They need to take it all the way out to the 41. Pressure right at the middle, and Berlin is going to be sacked at the 15 by Eric Coleman. Ron, you've made a good point. When you have a Jad Dean who hit 50 yards and, uh, and above, you, now you're going to get great field position so you can work to set him up, run that clock, and try to win this football game. you got a great field goal weapon. Well, this is two great games in a row for Coleman. Had a sack and scored a touchdown against NC State, and now he comes up with a... The second sack of the night at Berlin, and here's the left footer's uh, boot. Very high, good coverage kick. All the way back to the 30, eludes the first wave, and here he goes. Up the sideline, hang on. Hit with a head-high tackle and finally pushed out of bounds, and Clemson, just like that, because of having that extraordinary weapon as a return guy, Justin Miller, has given them field position. What do they say, Michael? They're going to spot it. Around the 40-yard line, 54 on the kick, and 36 on the return. Let's take a time. Well, we're going to stay here, I've just been told. Wow, field position now, they say the 33-yard line. We talked about the two punt returners and kickoff guys, Devin Hester and Justin Miller. Justin Miller with a big, big-time play. <laughs> well, you know, it's what you said off the top of the telecast. You're crazy if you kick to either one of them, and neither team really has wanted to kick pain. to the other guy. Yeah. So, boy, 
Clemson in great field position. Shovel pass. And Merriweather hit behind the line of scrimmage. That is an outstanding play by number 99, and that is uh, Kareem Brown. Kareem Brown beat the offensive lineman block and was in there waiting on the shovel draw. Mike could practice on Thursday before they started a serious workout. Some of the linemen were running pass patterns against some of the linebackers. Kareem Brown at 301 pounds can run with some of the linebackers. Astoundingly good speed for such a huge young man. But he got demoted this week. He was one of those changes that was made. And right now he's playing hard. Merriweather, Reggie Merriweather looked at the clock and called timeout. Charlie Whitehurst was looking to the sideline for the play. Merriweather alert. So we'll take a timeout. Well, Tommy Bowden, a little uh, more less stressed expression on his face and for good reason. Really nice coaching job and adjustment at halftime as his Tigers have come out blasting on all cylinders here in the second half. Got a man over the middle and he overthrew him. And I'll tell you what, two guys, actually Curry was cutting toward the pass as well. And it, he had two people free but didn't get the ball to either one of them. Stuckey was also in the picture against Kelly Jennings. They're working on Antrell Roll. Who looks to me like he's limping. Third down. Line to make is the 23. There's Antrell Roll. Mike, they need about seven or eight yards to get it to within a comfortable Jad Dean field goal range. From the shotgun. Pressure. Got the pass away, and he's got a completion at the 30-yard line. Bayham, and they stop him at the 28. So this is going to make it, if they go for the field goal, about a 45, maybe a 44-yard attempt. Well, they're, they're going to go for the field goal. Jad Dean is in his hands and his foot. Well, number nine, Georgia Tech. That's the highest-ranked team uh, that Clemson has defeated during the reign of Tommy Bowden, and that happened back in 2001. This ball is going to be placed down on the near hash mark, and it is a 44-yard attempt. Good pass, and he yanked it. He came across it, tried to hit it too hard, and it is wide to the left and no good. We saw the pre-practice video that was taken on Jad Dean. Tommy Bob knows this. He may have to use Chad Dean again. They may be set up for another field goal. And he needs him to concentrate and uh, be ready the next time. You know, and reading Tommy's lips, what he said to the young man was one more. Now, I wonder yeah. if, if that means, <laughs> you know, it's got to get done the next time or... You're going to be history or what? High pass from center and Brock Berlin fortunate to even be able to hold on to the football as McDuffie was all over it. Grabbed it with his right hand. Joel El Rodriguez with the snap. Almost like a basketball play where he controlled the ball with his right hand. But Clemson was smart. They tackled both. Brock Berlin and Gore, the running back, to make sure whoever had the ball would not get away. Second and 12. No blitz, pressure from the front four, pass over the middle, too tall. It'll stop the clock at the 7.06 mark. The ball is taken off on Brock Berlin. His release of the football is taken off on him. Well, up next at Sports Center with Neil Everett and Scott Van Pelt in college football, the Sooners struggle again. Also in college football, number one USC, an update from Corvallis where they're playing in the Fog Bowl up there. And in Major League Baseball, the question is, green for Sosa? All of that on Sports Center in just over seven minutes. Berlin 
Pressure coming after him, rolls it, now gets the pass away, thrown short, and that's not going to be nearly enough as the coverage was right there. Jola made the reception. Boy, Watkins with an outstanding play. He was all over it. Number nine, Justin Miller now becomes the most important guy on this football field for Clemson. He's been close to breaking a punt. This is a career high eighth punt for this young man, Brian Monroe. As you look at Miller, and he can burn you in an instant. Here's the punt. Very high, wobbly driving spiral. Their catch has been called for and made at the 25 yard line. 50 yards on that punt. That's a big effort to come through when when they needed him most and also a 4 9 on the hang time. Show the ESPN USA today top 10. Auburn Idol sitting there waiting to see if somebody in front of them falls. Wisconsin Georgia California and Texas all have won. Utah doesn't start for a while out they're, west. They're playing. They're playing. They're ahead 21 to 3, I believe. Okay. Thank you, sir. But Auburn is really set up right. They got Georgia, and they got Alabama, and then they probably have Tennessee in the uh, if they win the Georgia game. Winston on the sideline doing just what Aaron was talking about, and that is trying to help out, add a little positive reinforcement to his teammates. As Kareem Brown is right there to make the tackle on Merriweather. Going back to the BCS poll, if you look at that, if Auburn wins out Georgia, Alabama with the wins, and then plays Tennessee in the uh, championship game, I, I believe they'll hurdle Oklahoma because their last three games are a lot more uh, winning teams than what yeah. Oklahoma's going to play. Second down and nine. That's Curry in motion, and they're going to throw it to him, and Miami's right there, and he dropped the football. Boy, Miami had it scoped out. Antrell Roll was there to make the play on him, and Curry took his eye off of it just long enough and dropped the football. You see Antrell Roll limping. He has really come up big here in the fourth quarter on this play against Curry. Aaron talked about the meeting where Brock Berlin talked and Antrell Roll talked, and he said, Coaches can't play for us. They can teach us, but we got to play. I tell you, Ventrell has kept his head up there. He might have intercepted that ball also. But he was there to make the short tackle, and he caused the play to go awry. Third down and nine. They need to take it to the 35. Whitehurst got a man, and he dropped the football, and that is Kelvin Grant. Wow. Tommy Baum knows this play right here. Mike. As Devin Hester got beat by Kelvin Grant. A well-thrown football. Well, there's a great example of going the other way about coaches can coach you, but they can't play for you. And Took Grant, his eyes off of boy, it. Had it right in his hands across midfield. And you can see the kid punishing himself mentally. There's Chasen's kick, a driving spiral. Tries to get it away from Hester, but he catches it. Hester is hit immediately, and now still on his feet, and is going to be stopped at the 25. Roscoe Parrish actually on the return, 44 on the kick, and a loss of eight on the return. Fourth quarter, tied at 21. Chad Scott takes it nine yards to put the Tar Heels up by seven. And then Devin Hester goes in on the sweep. And the game is tied at 28, but freshman Carter Bart boots a 42-yard field goal on the final play of the game, and Carolina wins it. First time that they've ever beaten the team ranked in the top five. And the result of that game from 3 to 10 in the BCS for Miami. So Roscoe Parrish back on that last punt return rather than Hester. Took a dangerous chance. Now the pass, and this is Moss, and he is going to be almost to the 50-yard line as he'll tackle him at the 46. And all of a sudden, that clock is going to be like it goes on fast forward. With five minutes and 13 seconds showing, it will start again with the resetting of the chains. Tonight's key stat brought to you by Burger King, having their way. 57 yards, two sacks, no points allowed in the second half.
And then, of course, we're talking about the Clemson defense. Clemson blitz off the corner, got man coverage, far sideline, and the ball is overthrown. Lance Leggett, the intended receiver, and the cover by Justin Miller. Or Justin Miller has proven he can run all night and uh, not even can. show any sign of being winded. Pun return and man coverage where he always facing the fade route, the deep routes. I just keep thinking that Brock Berlin and the out routes are there. Take the 10 year, 12 yard out. Blitz coming off the corner. Berlin steps up, throws it complete at the 43 yard line. And that is Darnell Jenkins. And Darnell actually saved Brock Berlin's life on that one because the pass was too tall and he went way up and brought it down for the first down. They have the outs. That's what Darnell Jenkins ran. The out route at 12 yards made a good catch, Darnell Jenkins, but that's open for Miami. You see what he did in the first quarter, and since then, draw play and tackled at the 39 yard line. Leroy Hill with the stop on Frank Gore. Good tackle by Leroy Hill. You know what he did, though, Mike? And I, I really don't like this, and I don't care what level it's on. He twisted his leg, and that's the reason Gore is down. If you look back at the replay, and I'm not trying to point the finger at anybody, but you look at it, and, and Gore could not get his body over. Watch it right here. And he continues to twist the leg and well in fairness to Leroy Hill he's rolling so as he rolls he's got a hold of the leg watch him roll here see he's rolling over <laughs> Frank Gore is Frank it, Gore is not buying your story. No, he's no, buying I'm, mine. I'm, yeah, he's <laughs> buying right your But I, Leroy <laughs> Hill, you you ask a guy to make a tackle, hold on, and that's what he's doing. So it is second down, and the ball will rest at the 40-yard line. Moss comes in to operate a tailback. And they give it to Moss. Right side, really good block by the fullback Humphrey. Oh. But I'm telling you, a nice close quickly by Gaines Adams and Leroy Hill again. And that play was going nowhere. You talked about Humphrey's block. I think he blocked Leroy Hill. <laughs> Watch fullback 41. Whoa. That's a block on Anthony Waters. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony's saying, I'm going to get lower. <laughs> Well, for all youngsters watching, that's you know you kind of grab for the for the grass, don't you? When you're oh. when you come that free, get low. You're, you're about to get hit. Third Leverage. down. Boy, Mike, you got to take it to the 32-yard line. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the ball game. Tied at 17, and pressure coming, and just throws this one away. And he turns around and looks at the referee, <laughs> and Ron Cherry said that that legal what you did. Good defense by John Lovett's defensive uh, unit, Clemson. Good pressure. Boy, don't you know that this guy right here wants another chance? Kelvin Grant, he's yep. waiting for it. He's going to get, get another chance. The last two punts, 54 and 50. And right now, he doesn't need one that far. But he needs to kick it at an angle so that Miami can't re- or Clemson can't return it a great long distance. This one is going to hit in the end zone. So, Matt Leinard, let's check back in the studio. What do you got for us? Well, Ron, the number one team in the country, USC, dealing with home fog advantage tonight at Oregon State. Visibility less than a quarter mile in Corvallis. Don't believe me, ask Reggie Bush. He never saw that spot. Beavers recovered, hit a field goal. They that was six That was a very small window to sticking that throw in there. Well, you're not kidding. It was on a rope the whole way. Oh, I looked at that thing when it was developed lower the kids can see more than from what that up above camera shows but it, it is pretty doggone dense our situation 303 left on the clock 
Dwayne Coleman is in the ball game at tailback, and you get a good look at Jad Dean. Could wind up being on his shoulders. They give it to Curry. Curry will be pushed after out of bounds after only minimal gain by three. Devin Hester's getting up slowly. He may be tired, be all the plays he's played. Well, you're right. He's he's still running. Now they're calling him back to the other side. So yeah, our man is on cover. Yeah, this game is about to be over quickly. And they go with a running play with Merriweather. And Merriweather fighting his way. And boy, what a second effort. He may even have the first down. Great three again on the tackle. I'm not sure Whitehurst saw what was going on there because that wide receiver Raise was throwing. He <laughs> there's an uncovered rule. Uncovered wide receiver just reach up and throw the ball out there. Merriweather limping now. Yeah. Sports Center coming up next. If I had to guess, I'd say Merriweather is not injured. He's got cramps. Not a real hot night, but a very humid night. And there he got it. Just the nose of the football. First down for Clemson and for Merriweather. That's a heck of a second effort. And that's what they're doing. They are working on his calves. He was beginning to cramp up a little bit. Clemson took the timeout earlier, took two timeouts earlier, one for that fake field goal. They have one timeout left. Well, they're in great position with the first down at their own 30. Obviously, you don't want to do anything stupid. Don't lose it. Stay within the realm of uh, being smart in offense. If you can move it downfield, kick the winning uh, field goal, wonderful. Otherwise, you go to overtime. Whitehurst, quarterback draw. Got a blocker in front, and Coleman actually didn't take the guy in the direction he thought he was, and Treat makes the yeah, stop. Greg Treat has made some big plays. You talked about his tackling when he saved a first down, third down play. He made another key tackle on Whitehurst. So it's second down, clock running. We are now under two minutes left at regulation. Whitehurst wants over the middle and he throws that one and just to get it away Curry was the man that he wanted but Miami really came with the pressure and Baraka Atkins was one of those who was right in his face Kareem Brown also run number 99 he got two defensive linemen they had a twist on which means two defensive linemen go inside they come outside also the defensive tackle got to Whitehurst well, here we go, Mike. Third down. They need to take it to the 40-yard line. Clock is stopped. One minute and 46 seconds left in regulation time. Whitehurst throws the screen. Coleman, nothing doing. They corral him and shove him out of bounds. And then on Miami's behalf, by knocking him out of bounds, stops the clock at 140. And they have one timeout left that they're going to be able to use. Devin Hester not going back. He's so tired, they're taking him out. Yep, number one, Roscoe Parrish is the deep man. And don't think this guy can't burn you. Now, Miami has really got to the close to they some have. punts. See to, if they come after him. About to ask you that same thing if you thought they might come after him. Nope, they got the return on, and they still almost block it. And no flag goes down as they bumped the kicker, but uh, there was a very dramatic moment. He was not knocked down, really. Well, Tommy Bowden's out on the football field. He wanted a uh, penalty. Only 34 yards in the kick, and take a look at it. There's the kick. Well, we're seeing tougher. Uh, <laughs> we, what you say? We I've got more better to get on the elevator today yeah. coming up here. <laughs> okay, so Miami now sets up shop at the 32-yard line. They got 90 seconds to work with. Lobs this one, and the ball is dropped. Patrick Hill was right there, right in front of Waters, and dropped it. Larry Coker talked about uh, 
Brock Berlin, he said in the last two years, Brock has had four fourth quarter wins. Well, he's got a chance for a fifth. Good look at John Petty. The sophomore out of Clearwater is he stays loose on the near sideline. Pass out in the flat. That's Roscoe, and uh, he will be bumped out of bounds by Leroy Hill. Shy of the first down by about two and a half yards. Last time back to back losses for Miami. Since 1997 and 2003, they lost to Virginia Tech and then the Volunteers. So third down, and they need to take the ball to the 42-yard line. 119 showing on the clock, and not much in the middle. In fact, they're going to force a fourth down play. Anthony Waters makes the tackle on Gore, and I mean Frank had no place to go. Very pleased with what his staff has done and what his players have done. He's going to get another opportunity here. Nine punts. It'll be number 10 coming up. Taking their last time out. So let's take a quick commercial. 61 seconds left. We're tied. We'll come back and see the end. So we are back, and here's the punt. Oh, this is a dandy. A high hanging spiral. Caught at the 10. No fair catch is signal for. And here he comes. Miller looking for a spot to run. If he stopped short of the 10 yard line. 51 yards in the kick and minus two on the return. Now, you got to put a star by Brian Monroe's name because when they needed something big to happen, that young man has really done a wonderful job, too. buddy. He Excellent has. Excellent punt. Look at this clock now. Field position, 52 seconds. I think this first place either going to be a draw or a screen. Mike, this is Fur, and he's been loosening on the sideline. He's three of five this year. You may be right. He might have said, "Hey, next time we're going to go with somebody else." Yeah. 42 yards is his longest. He'll go with a running play, and Coleman is hit immediately. There's the draw, and now I think what you do is Hamby Bowden is go to overtime now you don't want to make a mistake down here Miami's only got one time out left they could stop at one time you can get to overtime field position you don't want yeah. to take a chance here they're going to take a uh, safe quarterback take a knee 17 seconds now the 16 and he'll snap it. Whitehurst will go on one knee, and we prepare for overtime. Ten seconds, down to nine. They don't have to snap it again. So Brock Berlin looking out at the field, and he knows that he and that gentleman right there, Charlie Whitehurst, are about to play an overtime battle. At the end of regulation, our game is ended, tied at 17. We'll be right back. So we are back tied at 17 and we're about to go to overtime and Mike Gottfried as we head into overtime my first thought is we look at the rules and as you're able to read them yourselves Merriweather starting tailback for Clemson is Gimpy. I think he's got cramps so he's not full speed Coleman is playing nicked up we've seen Yusuf Kelly just a little bit and on the other side of the coin we saw Frank Gore come limping off the field so the number one tailbacks are not in good shape as far as overtime. What do you do if you're coaching these two ball clubs? Well, Moss, you got Moss if you're Miami. He's a good running back. You can use Hester at uh, tailback position. I'm not so sure Frank Gore won't come back in. Yeah. I don't know who has the edge right here. I think both teams are tired. I do, too. Both defenses are controlling this game. Uh, somebody's got to get hot. It's going to come down to Berlin and Whitehurst. Or those place kickers. Or the place kickers. <laughs> okay, so we now prepare for overtime, and you can see Ron Cherry, the referee, talking with Larry Coker and also Antrell Roll. 
four and zero oh, Clemson in overtimes. Miami two and one. Well, we're not going to have a tie. In the old days, you would have had a tie, and they always said that was like kissing your sister. But I've seen some pretty good-looking sisters in ties. Uh, when you're behind and you come back and fight back and you get to a tie, the sister looks pretty good. But this one's going to be decided on the field. So the team captains uh, have been called back to the center of the field. They will uh, flip the coin. Hands here, hands here. Most of the walls in the air, okay? Here we go. Go ahead. It's tails. You want to toss, Miami. You want to go on defense. You want to go on defense, okay? Uh, Nothing. All right, Jay, just for a second, okay? Justin won the call. Okay? I think if you're Curry, you pick the open end down here. Yeah. Well, less. Noise and you got the open end, so uh, your band's down in, in that direction. <laughs> All right, so we are set to go. Etro rolled, continuing to limp, and as he comes back to the near sideline, but he's going to be out there playing. Uh, it, he wouldn't have it any other way, I can promise you. Nye begins to trot, and we're just about set to get this first overtime period started. And of course the ball is placed down at the 25 yard line for the Tigers of Clemson. They'll be on offense first. The best thing that's happened to both offenses here in the second half because they have a short field now. Sports Center coming up next immediately following our overtime. And I have a feeling as you watch Brock Berlin and Roscoe Parrish on the sideline, it's not like they're drawing in the dirt. No. But they're talking to each other about what corners and safeties are doing and what might work. And Brock's saying, that's the pass I'd like to throw to you first. Maybe the bubble screen that they're talking about. Crowd comes to life. We got overtime. Coleman nothing I mean he just hits a brick wall maybe a loss of one Thomas Carroll and also Tavares Gooden there to combine on the stop you talked about Merriweather being out so the Coleman who's played a lot and Yusef Kelly is going to have to come through this is where I think you really look for Curry you know who else you might look for Kelvin Grant, I'm yeah. sure, would love to make amends for the ball that he dropped, and he just checked into the lineup, and he's a big target, Mike. He's on the right side. Whitehurst going to go long and just off his fingertips, and that's who they went for, and a flag is down. Going to be pass interference, and that's exactly who they went for to Grant. And I have a feeling that he's been on the sideline begging him ever since overtime came about. Well, they got two deep man coverage, Ron. Also, where the fade is the route you like against that. Here, he's going to go outside release and run the fade. The safety's over the top, and he's got to make sure Curry entertains him also. So he got the outside route. Yeah, Jennings. Jennings locked on him way too quickly. See, he starts to push him right there. And because Grant is so large, he couldn't take a chance on giving him just total freedom. So with the penalty, it is first down, Clemson, ten and a half yards away. Here comes a blitz. They go with the draw play, and Coleman just has not been effective. Merriweather has such a short and a low center of gravity, and those legs are constantly churning. You can't really stop against this Miami defense. No. And there you see him coming back in the ballgame, Merriweather. What you're, what you're looking at, Ron, is a 4-2 defense, so it looks like the run's there. And that's what Miami's trying to bait Charlie Whitehurst and the coaches into.
Crowd cheering defense. Second down, they can pick up, they can pick up a first down without scoring. Pass over the middle, got it right at the one-yard line, and he will be stopped. That's three who was there to make the play defensively. Curry is the guy you gotta go to. Number one, he got down to about the one-yard line. Good tackling by Miami to keep him out of the end zone. Now here comes two more tight ends into the ball game, and the personnel grouping will change drastically. Both teams. Yep, it looks as though Hall, Downer, and Zach Green will come in, all three tight ends for the Clemson Tigers, and they break the huddle quickly, and they're down at the line of scrimmage. The handoff straight away. Merriweather, touchdown! That was a phone booth play. So the Clemson Tigers taking advantage of a pass interference call, but also quickly to the line of scrimmage and three tight ends and they knock it in. No, you're right. They came up quick to the line of scrimmage, unbalanced line. Miami didn't recognize it. Jad Dean to attempt the extra point. Ball is down and he got it. So it is now in the backyard of the Hurricanes of Miami. Clemson scores first. He had an unbalanced line and a power eye formation, which everything was to the right side, where he outnumbered the uh, defense. Charlie Whitehurst knows he's got a leg up. Boy, you do, particularly when you're on the road, Mike. Got that football and scored first. Tyrone let's, Moss. Tailback. Let's see if they go to Roscoe Parrish like you talked about. Tackle moved. Butler, number 64. Brought to the snap. Paul start. 84 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Kevin Everett instead of Butler. So now it's going to be first down and 15 from the 30-yard line. The Butler didn't do it. It was the tight end, Kevin Everett. I, you know, I thought you were right, though. I thought Butler was maybe both of the move. I take that. High formation, short drop, pumped it once, going to go on top, looking for power. And he makes the catch. It is first down Miami. That's what they were talking about. I'll bet you anything on the sideline. Lip reader. 20 yards in the pass play. Roscoe Parrish breaks inside like it's a slant. Then he runs a fade. The pump by Brock Berlin. Outside Roscoe Parrish with the catch. That's as good a pass as he has thrown here in the second half. Don't you agree? Yes. Good route oh, by Roscoe Parrish. Such a great athlete, went up and just took it down. 245 yards throwing tonight for him. Running play. Puts a head down at the five-yard line is Tyrone Moss. Then being pushed back, it'll be second down. Second and goal. Jamal Fudge making the tackle. Well, Moss has come in for the injured Frank Gore. 5'10", 231, power running tailback. Good look at Frank. After that uh, leg injury, they did not take a chance on putting him back on the field. Second down and goal. Play action. Waited a long time, then drilled it, and did he catch it? No. Oh. Parrish, the intended receiver. And on the coverage, he was just blanketed right there. You talk about when a quarterback builds a relationship with the receiver. Roscoe Parrish is the guy Brock Berlin believes in. He's trying to get him the football. Yeah. Low throw. Ty Hill has had a good ball game tonight. He really has. Both him and Justin Miller, two big time corners. Yep. Two youngsters that are really good athletes and both can run. Here comes third down and goal from the five yard line. They got a score. Clemson took the ball and scored on their first possession. 
Berlin running, still running, lobs this one, throws it away. And boy, boy, we're going to come down to fourth down. It is up to this play right here, or they're going to duplicate what happened in 2003, losing two football games in a row. Clemson did a good job of stringing that play out. Bennett and Tate give credit to those two big defensive linemen. They really came with some good pressure as Larry Coker has called a timeout. And Miami's going to talk about it. They got fourth down. They must score a touchdown or the overtime is over. Got to throw the ball. You know, you got to figure Roscoe Parrish is going to be in on this reception somehow. If you're on the other side, you got to know where number one is. A lot of times the coaches on the other team will watch the huddle to see who coaches are talking to. He's on Brock Berlin's on the headset with Dan Warner up in the press box to get this play call. Here's Dan Warner right there in the middle. Larry Coker's on the set too and they're talking about what play they like in this situation. On the other side John Lovin his coaches trying to figure out what call to make in the secondary they know it's going to be a throw. Sports Center coming up next immediately following our overtime. If Miami scores we go to overtime number two. If they fail to score the touchdown then this ball game is over and the Clemson Tigers would win it. The only thing running is the play clock. From the five yard line. Got a fade over here. Berlin straight drop looking near sideline heads incomplete leg at the intended receiver and the Clemson Tigers have upset the Miami Hurricanes Ty Hill with the cover. Boy what a job by Tommy Bowden and his staff Mike Godfrey. Go back to the fake field goal I think he sent a message to his football team Tommy Bowden Michael Keane the offensive coordinator. Ty Hill got tied up a little bit on that pass play. Let's go down to the sideline, Mike, and Aaron Andrews is there with a victorious head coach. Well, that's right, Coach. Heading into this game, 0-3 on the road. You said you could feel your team about to click at any time. What does it feel like to click here at the Orange Bowl? Well, it's a special place for Clemson because the last time they hear they won a national championship. And none of the kids were born, so we had to talk them into it being a special game. But they, they played really hard. I was real proud of them. What does this mean? This win mean to you when you're trying to secure a bowl berth, Coach? <laughs> we need one more. We got two games left. Need one more win. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Okay, so our final score in overtime: Clemson 24 to 17. They win it. Coming up next at Sports Center on ESPN News, it's post game extra, and on ESPN Two, the Colorado State Utah game. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everybody, from Miami, Florida.